which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, good evening and welcome to the February 3rd, 2020 Board of Selectmen's meeting. On the agenda tonight, we have public service announcements. We have a common victor license for the Sturbridge Host Hotel and an amendment to the Sturbridge Host Hotel liquor license change of owner. We have department reports from the town planner, Department of Public Works, building department was coming in, but um, the building inspector is sick, so we'll put that off. Town administrator's update. We have some action items looking for approval for the storm windows at center office building to approve deficit spending for snow and ice removal, acceptance of a community compact grant for fiber optic network, discussion with natural grid concerning power outages, a vote to sign the 2020 seasonal population increase, and a review of host community benefit agreements for retail sale of marijuana, old business, new business, correspondence, approval of minutes, and citizens forum then adjournment. Okay, any public service announcements? Priscilla? No. Chase? None. Mike? No. And I have none. <coughs> okay. So who's here representing the host? Okay, could you please come down? The mic's for the uh, audience at home. Okay, and your name for the record, please. Yogesh. Oh, yeah, there's mics there. We can hear okay, but that's the people watching on television. Yogesh Patel. Okay. And you have two requests before the board. Okay. Yes. Okay. The first request you have is to approve a common victualler license. Mm -hmm. Okay, does the board have any questions on that one? Is there a motion then to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, the next request is a change of manager. Owner. Owner, sorry. And it's early in the night. Okay, change of owner. Okay, has everyone read through? Any questions on anything? Okay, it's a change in ownership. Uh, are you retaining the same manager? We're changing the manager as well. Okay. Um, you'll have to um, put that in a request too. I think it's Is in it a app. An, an application. Was we it on part of that application? I didn't think it was. It would be a separate application. This, oh, I'm sorry. So I didn't. Yeah, that's okay. It's, I, I, I did put it in our application as a manager. She was listed as the manager, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, but. The current manager. Yeah. Yeah, but so I also requesting to the change of the manager too in the same application. So is, is not that the right way to do? We'd have to do two applications. Two applications, okay. So how we can do the second one? We have to do it. Same way. We'll just have to do it again. Yeah. This one will be change of owner, and then we'll change the manager. All right. We can um, go forward with this one. If the board approves, we can make the stipulation that we do get a request for change of manager. Is this a new manager, okay. or is that? So it'll be easier. Okay. Well, so huh? I th it's put in, but it, it doesn't, it's not really a request. The license is checked off, transfer of license. Oh, and, but the manager information yes. is in this application. Yes, but, but he didn't say anywhere that it was a change in manager. So on the other, oh, okay. on the liquor license for the host, the other manager is still listed. Okay, there's a second application. Okay, yeah, okay. Any other questions? I don't have a question on this, but... What kind of changes do you anticipate making any changes? First of all, congratulations. Thanks, I appreciate it, yeah. Purchase. Yeah. Do you anticipate any changes to the hotel? 
Yes, our architect was here today. With this. We're going to start first the lobbying and uh, in the lobby area, and uh, already room we starting. We already there was today we about like 30 room mattresses and a platform bed came, and uh, mostly the we're going to right now. Usually we go as we see what the customer demands it. Right now they're looking for like. It's a, right now it's a rustic look, mm -hmm. but now new generation does want a little modern things. So that's we towards we leaning to that things. So you're gonna do some renovations yeah. and 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 sh uh, sh sh surely we because we are about like one and a half hour away from here, so we will make it happen with your all blessing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Someone want to make a motion then? So move that to move approve that we approve the host. Service Host Hotel liquor license with a change of owner. Yep. Okay, is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay. Good luck and welcome. Thank yeah, thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, next we have Town Planner. <coughs> Good evening, Jean. Good evening. <laughs> You've had a busy year? Yes. We've had a busy year, so I provided you my written report. Um, not sure there's any need for me to kind of list through what everything is here. I don't know if you had any specific questions about the items that I've given you, or if you'd just like a little overview of um, some of our more current projects that we're working on. Well, why don't we take an overview and then the board has questions. Okay. okay. All right. So um, I've provided you the uh, last 12 months worth of meeting data. Um, consistent with your request, I've listed actually the actions that were taken at each meeting. You'll notice that uh, meetings were down actually in 2019. We were down about three meetings per board, which uh, was a welcome break. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it's given us the opportunity to work on some of our kind of larger tasks like implementing the permit software and working on the Route 15 zoning. Right now I'm working with the um, housing partnership and we're working on an update of our housing production plan and we are planning a public forum on February 26th. We're actually going to do two forums. The first will be held at the Senior Center from 1 to 3 in the afternoon and the second will be held here at Town Hall from 6.30 to 8.30. So we're encouraging anyone who has an interest in housing or everybody should have an interest in housing we all need to live somewhere to attend and we will go over the survey data that we've gathered um, we had a, a fairly decent return on the surveys we got about 300 surveys back so for a housing survey that's not so bad and um, we look forward to sharing that information taking input from people who may want to attend and we thought by doing the first session at the senior center it might make it easier for the seniors who might not want to travel in the evening february can still be pretty cold or sometimes mm -hmm. slippery so uh, thanks to leslie wong for accommodating that as well okay and the meeting here will be televised it will be <laughs> yes yes and that begins at 6 30. And we'll have um, Central Mass Regional Planning Commission is working with us on this uh, project, so they'll be out to um, present that data as well. And then um, we just closed out our Green Communities Grant, so we were able to do $150,000 worth of improvements in the buildings through our Green Communities Program. A lot of it was the change out of lighting to new LED lights. We did some weatherization at Public Safety and um, we were able to do all of the lighting at the library with contribution from the friends of the library so that worked out well um, luckily Robin had just started as our facilities coordinator so she was able to oversee those projects for us and Robin and I will be meeting with our um, energy vendor next week to talk about the next grant round we're eligible to apply for up to two hundred thousand dollars of grant funds this time so we're trying to chip away at the projects on our energy reduction plan so that we stay on track to meet that 20 percent reduction in our energy usage and um, I think I mentioned the permit software implementation so um, several departments are now using it for all of our transactions and we're hoping in a few more months once staff gets more comfortable we'll actually be able to put it out on the web so that 
contractors can apply for permits from the comfort of their home in their pajamas, as we like to say, <laughs> and hopefully that will cut down on a lot of uh, data entry, especially in the building department. We're really hopeful that uh, mechanicals, especially plumbing, electrical, gas, things like that, if um, the mechanical contractors get in the habit of doing it online, it will cut down drastically on the data entry that has to be done in the building department office. So it's been a bit of a challenge and a struggle, and um, but we are getting there. So those, I think, are the highlights. Okay, questions from the board on the report? or It's very excellent, detailed Thank you. summary, and I'm sure it took you a while, so we appreciate it. Thank you. No questions, Jean. Okay. <laughs> okay. Can I Thank have, you. I'll just leave you with this yes. one flyer. Okay. Public service announcement. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. At our next meeting. Okay, next we have the Department of Public Works, which Good evening. Good evening. Uh, you, you have the reports for December and January. Uh, the only things I'd like to note is we had a major ice problem on Acorn Lane that was apparently given to us when we took over the road. <laughs> but we've been working on that, and I think we have that settled. And we send in some people for competent person training. That's new. And we've been doing a lot of work lately on the trails for Tom and, and, and getting ready for some spring trail work. But other than that, uh, snow and ice, and uh, it's kind of slow this time of the year. Good. I like it. <laughs> Any questions? Questions from the board? I just have one comment, which the uh, teacher in me. Okay. The tense on your verbs, sometimes it says fix down mailbox, but if you've already done it, you've fixed them. I will let well, it keeps going back and forth. Sometimes you have it in the past tense. Sometimes you have it in the I'll let as the, a command. I'll let the appropriate people know. <laughs> <laughs> I can always read it over. <laughs> but other than that, Mike? Yeah, the scheduled uh, classes for competent person, that's in, that'll be in February. Yeah, yeah, we just thought we'd throw that. That was kind of there for you, Mike. Yeah, I keep, <laughs> I keep asking about it. I think it's important that yeah. public works personnel. And it, in case you were wondering what that is, anybody, that's that's if you're working on a construction site, you need, you need a competent person there to make sure everybody's safe and they're following the OSHA rules and all that stuff. It's, so. And it's uh, part of the trench safety law. And yep. OSHA, all that. But we're now sort of under. Mm -hmm. Sort of, kind of. Yeah, well, it's it's still under the state, but we're under the same regulations mm -hmm. as OSHA. Okay, anything else? I just, Mary? I just wanted to follow up on what your efforts are in terms of reducing the traffic during holidays when, the, when Waze sends um, mm -hmm. traffic through some of our residential streets. I know you were working on it. Yeah, we had our, we had our first uh, traffic committee meeting or transportation committee meeting and we went through all of the uh, suggestions that we got at the meeting nice. and right now we're Tommy's still working on or Chief Ford's still working on the the ways and the uh, the GPS part so until he f exhausts that effort okay we're kind of sitting back to see what happens with that if that doesn't work then we're going to go to figure out a plan B and see if, if there's anything we can do we're not okay. really sure yet so you've met you've had one yep. meeting yep. Thus we far. finally put the put the committee back together Jeff did so we're working on that. Well, this time, no big holiday coming up till May. Yeah, well, it comes quick. <laughs> <laughs> is, that quick. The, is that the same committee that's working on updating the traffic rules and regulations? Yes. Okay, anything else from the board? Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, next we have town administrator. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, on the podium this evening are a couple things you asked for at the Saturday session. One is the uh, spreadsheet showing the, the comparison towns we're using for the compensation study. There's also an email from Gene Bouvon, the town planner, on the Route 20 truck stop that there was a question on. Um, the health department 
is going to have an emergency dispensing site drill on Friday the 21st at 9 a.m. at Burgess Elementary School. Uh, it's just a drill, but it's uh, coming up on the 21st of February. And finally, uh, Nicole Costanzo with KP has put together sample motions for the HCAs, and those are on the uh, dais for you this evening as well. So when we get to that point, we'll make sure they're, that you have them. And that's what I have. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions from the board? No, from the retreat, our next meeting, we'll have a printed list of the goals. Absolutely. That we, we can vote on them. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, next we have acceptance of community compact grant for fiber. Nope. 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 Installation of, storm installation of storm windows at the center office building. And we have a letter from Robin. Good evening. Good evening, Robin. Could you state your name for the record, please? Cause My name is Ramesh Rabbis. I'm the facilities coordinator. Thank you. Okay, you want to just give us an overview, please? Um, sure. At the special town meeting on the 27th, the town appropriated the additional $2,600 for the uh, contractor to be able to move forward with the center office storm window project using the CPA funds. So we um, are working together with the contractor for the agreement. Permission is uh, requested to let the town administrator enter into the agreement. Um, pending the approval of the Massachusetts Historic Commission Preservation Restriction Review. Um, so center office is under a preservation restriction since 1999 and I spoke with the gentleman who does this review um, today and the storm windows would be a staff review at their level but I'm confident that there should be no concerns on their front hopefully it's a little drafty right Jean <laughs> okay Jeff you want to add anything to it no, I think Robin's done a good job since she's been here trying to uh, put her arms around this project. We've had difficulty finding contractors and then uh, putting together the, the process of acquiring the additional funds at town meeting. Um, we've gone with the attorney's office to create a generic contract for public works um, projects. And so we have a uh, kind of a template to use and fill in the blank on what the actual project is. So Robin facilitated that as well. So I think we're ready to go. And we'll have storm windows in by June. Yes. <laughs> and then we'll work on the next one. <laughs> okay, now, uh, Robin, these windows, um, are they up, up and down with screens? Yes, they'll be operable windows. They will have screens on them, um, especially a center office building. There are a lot of open windows over there. People like to open them, so yeah. we will honor that. They will be the same color as the exterior windows. And the meeting rails, um, the intention is that the meeting rails will match and the profiles will, will be as minimal as possible. Okay, thank you. Anything else from the board? Someone want to make a motion then to approve the town administrator to enter into an agreement with Historic Preservation Associates for Center Office Storm Windows pending approval of the Massachusetts Historic Commission Preservation Restriction Review for a total sum of $16,876. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, thank you for. Thank you, have a great day. All you work on it. Okay. Now there is a request for approval of the deficit spending for snow and ice removal. Anybody have any question on? I just had a question. In if we are going over budget this year, are we not budgeting enough? Because it seems like we've had a really mild winter. It's just this. We just do a certain amount, and this is standard practice to renew it. Mm -hmm. We'll have to look at what we budget. I don't know what the history's been. Or you know, we'll we'll get some actuals compared to budget numbers. 
-hmm. Yeah, but we usually run into deficit mm -hmm. spending. Mm -hmm. because, I mean, and if, yeah. and if we're... In because if you, um, if we increase it, we have to keep on that same level. Whereas, you know, if we do the deficit, we can... If, if yeah, we're not like, budgeting enough, for, when they do the audit, yeah, they, they will let us know. And yeah. So it's better to be better to be know, under than over. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll still put together a list of actual yeah costs and see see where we are. Okay. Yeah. Because it fluctuates so much depending on the year. It'd be so much better if it was predictable. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Unpredictable. Okay. Next. Um, did we vote? No. We didn't. No. no. We haven't voted. No. Okay. Uh, Mike, I'll, any? I'll uh, make a motion to approve deficit spending for snow and ice removal costs for fiscal year 2020. Okay, is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay. Okay, next we have acceptance of a community compact grant for the fiber optic network. Jeff, you want to explain that one? Thank you, Madam Chair. Chair, uh, the town applied for and was granted a community compact information technology grant in the amount of uh, roughly $195,000. This will allow us to connect the town buildings and schools together with our own fiber optic network. It would enhance communication and enhance security of our networks. Um, we would have to work with the owners of the poles to get locations on the poles for this but that shouldn't be too difficult but overall it's greater efficiency connectivity and security of our computer networks and given we are the home of you know the founders of fiber optics kind of makes sense that is true any questions from the board okay somebody want to make a motion then I'll Jim? make no go ahead Mike yeah You've got it um, I'll make a motion to accept the community compact grant in the amount of $194,374 and authorize the town administrator to sign the grant documents on behalf of the town. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Five, zero. Okay, now we have a discussion with National Grid, Ms. Shaughnessy. Okay, you can uh, sit in. Yeah, those mics. I just. Yeah, we don't have a mic for the hall. It's, oh, okay. It's for the uh, television. So I am Kevin Shaughnessy. I am the community and customer manager from National Grid for the town of Sturbridge, and I have some associates with me this evening that I'll ask to introduce themselves. Uh, Jeff Cato, representing the distribution planning department. Good evening. I'm Ryan Moe, and I work in vegetation strategy. First, thank you through the chair to and to the select board and the town administrator, thank you for the chance to attend this evening and discuss the outages, the information that we have related to the outages, um, and some of the background information on our tree trimming and electric hazard programs. I'd like to start off with just some industry terms that'll help us with the discussion. Um, a feeder is a term that we use in the electric industry for electrical circuit or primary wires that are on a pole. They deliver power from the substation down through the communities, through the neighborhoods. A three-phase circuit is also referred to as a main line, and it's located at the very top of the pole. Um, the three-phase feeders branch off into single and two-phase configurations as they travel through the town and also supply secondary wires, which are the next set down on the poles, and those serve commercial and residential customers. When we talk about primary versus secondary wires, primary wires, as I said, are at the wires lo located at the top of the pole. There can be any arrangement. It can be three wires, two wires, or one phase, we call them. Um, our larger customers connect to these wires, the three phase, for larger voltage, and the secondary wires, the second set down, carry lower vo voltages of um, electricity. Another term we'll use this evening is pole top recloser. 
Pull top recloser is simply a switch that can separate feeders and or a section of feeders to allow for momentary faults or interruptions, whereas the circuit will re-energize without the need to send a crew. These are also utilized for planned outages to reduce the number of customers interrupted. And our pull top recloses are automated, if you will. They will sense a fault, they'll open up, power will go out momentarily, it will try and reclose if it's just a branch laying across the wires that can fall off. It'll reclose and it'll do that three times. If it stays open, then we do have to send a crew to take a look at what's caused the fault and the fault condition is still there. So having shared those definitions with you, um, we'll ask Ryan to talk about our tree trimming program and our electric hazard tree management program. Sure. Um, so National Grid has two core programs that we utilize for vegetation management. There's the cycle pruning program and enhanced hazard tree mitigation or EHTM. The cycle pruning program in the state of Massachusetts operates on a five year cycle. So across the state of Massachusetts, we've got about 13,000 miles of distribution line. And so we try to prune 2,600 miles per year um, to keep up with that five year cycle. Um, that sort of evolved from a town-based program that we were using 15 to 20 years ago, um, and now it's circuit-based. So we start at uh, a substation and go out from the beginning of the circuit all the way to the end. Um, that provides the greatest reliability benefit and um, clearance benefit on each particular circuit. Um, and it also helps us to more efficiently coordinate resources when we're doing pruning work at, in each town, we have to coordinate with um, police details, um, the community tree warden, um, and so it, it's easier, more efficient for us to do um, an entire circuit at once rather than uh, jumping around from town to town. Um, and then our EHTM program, we typically target um, some of our worst performing circuits based on tree events throughout the state of Massachusetts. Um, typically we get to between 30 and 40 circuits statewide. Um, over the last few years, a few of them have been in Sturbridge. And so that's based on tree related reliability history. We also look at customer counts, circuit construction. Um, for example, uh, three phase bare wire um, is more susceptible to tree related outages. So we would take that into account when we're um, planning our, our work for, for the following year. Um, and then on, during EHTM, we target dead, diseased, dying trees that are likely to cause power outages. Um, EHTM typically looks at the three phase section of lines. They serve the most number, the most customers. And if a tree falls there, it's going to take out the entire circuit as opposed to a uh, single phase on at the end of the circuit where only a few customers would lose power if a tree falls. So we get more efficiency there um, for the money we spend removing hazard trees. Um, and on top of that, I know over the past, this year in Sturbridge, we've removed about 148 uh, oak trees that were killed by gypsy moth and another, I believe, 60 to 65 trees on other projects throughout the town. Thank you, Ryan. On one of the pages that I've um, supplied in the packet that we gave, you can see the clearances that we use for tree trimming on our primary wires. We have six feet out from the cross arm um, in both directions. 10 feet below those lines and 10 to 15 above is our trim zone, our area of responsibility for our main line or our feeders. Um, for, for some of the history or the all of the history for our trimming and for our electric hazard tree program, um, you have six feeders that serve the town of Sturbridge and the last page in this deck, if you will, provides a map of all the feeders and what you see for the colors are related to the feeders that come out of the substations at West Charlton substation, Snow Street and Southbridge and the Fistdale substation that's in the town of Sturbridge. 
So in the lines that you see, the colored lines are only three phase primary or the feeders, main line feeders. There's wires throughout all of Sturbridge, but those are the main lines or the main circuits. So for the substation at Fisdale, it was last trimmed um, 408L1 and 408L2. And just a little explanation, the nomenclature there, 408 just tells us which substation it is. The L tells us what the voltage is. And then the one tells us which feeder it is out of the substation. So we have two of them coming out of the Fiscale, Fiscale substation. The last time it was trimmed was fiscal year 17. And our fiscal year goes from April 1st until March 31st. The next scheduled trim of those two feeders is in fiscal year 22. We have not done an electric hazard tree management program on those because it hasn't surfaced as one of the, the larger offenders, if you will, throughout the state. In the West Charlton substation, we have two feeders that enter into Sturbridge. The last trim was done, cycle trim was done in fiscal year 20. The next scheduled trim is fiscal year 25. And the last electric hazard tree management program came through in fiscal year 9 and then again in fiscal year 14. So those feeders came up on the list and we addressed them because of that list, them showing up on that list. And the last two feeders that serve Sturbridge come out of the Snow Street substation in Southbridge. The last trim done there was in fiscal year 19 on the 413L2. And the next scheduled trim is fiscal year 24. We did do a electric hazard tree management program on that in fiscal year 9, 13, and 17. And your final Snow Street feeder um, is actually being trimmed this year. Um, the 415L1 is currently being trimmed, and the last feeder on that list will be scheduled to be trimmed before March 31st. So the numbers, um, the pie chart shows all of the causes for outages in the, the town of Sturbridge from April 24th, 2019, <coughs> excuse me, through January 15, 2020, so a nine month period. We had 87 outages. The largest bulk of those are tree related, 50 of them. And then you can see all the other explanations as to the causes for the outage. <coughs> Excuse me. So as Ryan referred to, um, we have removed 148 public trees working with Tom Chamberlain, and we're currently working with your new tree warden with a list that he's looking at for review to see what we can remove there. Um, and that's related to the Gypsy Moth program. I do want to point out that roughly 75% of the 50 tree related outages we had in that window were in the area of responsibility that are outside what we trim. So a lot of those are private trees. <coughs> Excuse me. National Grid has removed 65 public trees um, and private trees under unrelated projects, which Ryan shared. Um, and we've also worked with a lot of individual customers that have requested assistance for trees they were removing in the proximity of our wires. I do have to add that Sturbridge has been extremely cooperative and proactive in the effort to remove trees that have been impacted by gypsy moth, the infestation, um, both those that may impact our wires and those that would not. They have worked in concert with us, both with their police details, the DPW, and your tree warden, have been proactive um, more so than a good number of our communities. So there, there are a lot of impacted trees in Sturbridge, but to your credit, you're, you're taking action on it. So thank you. Um, for electric reliability, some of the things we are doing to look at reliability and, and address, improve reliability in Sturbridge, Jeff can speak to some of the uh, work that we're doing. So we have a few projects queued up um, for the town of Sturbridge, which we expect to increase reliability in the town. Uh, the first one of those being the installation of a pole topper closer, which is one of those devices that Kevin mentioned a little earlier. Um, that's expected to increase reliability on the 415L1, which if you look at your map on the um, bottom of the handout that Kevin gave you, 
That's the circuit that feeds right into the center of town there. Um, in orange. Yes. And we're expected to get a significant boost in reliability out of the installation of that device. One of the other reliability projects that we have planned is to push um, part of the 408L1 circuit, which is currently in a right of way around um, the eastern portion of Big Elm Lake. We're planning on pushing that out onto the roadway, which is going to increase um, reliability by putting in new wire and equipment and also make it easier to maintain and easier to get back in case of an outage. So you're not going to be fighting through a forest to put a wire back up on a pole, for instance, by pushing it, on, pushing it out onto the road. We have a similar project on Lead Mine Lane, which is a smaller scope of work, um, but is also expected to increase reliability in the same way as the previous project that I described. And by doing that, we expect to prevent some of the outages that we saw um, last year for all three of those projects. So there's a good amount of um, reliability work in the queue. We just have to get it built out. Thank you. I will add that any um, solar work that comes through typically requires tree trimming um, to allow for typically larger poles to be installed and um, higher cable. So we would need to do tree trimming for that as well. Um, and there are some solar applications in the queue for Sturbridge. Now I would like to ask if you have any questions. Okay, questions from the board? I have a couple. Just in terms of understanding the pie, the pie is based on percentage as opposed to the amount because we've got 50 tree related. Well, I guess I'm looking at the equipment related. It says 11, but it corresponds to the 14 on the pie. I'm a, you see what I mean? Like the numbers yep. for the amount of outages add up to 87, but the pie doesn't correspond to the chart. Is that because that's based on percentage? No, it's not. So I will address that and reissue that pie chart to you. I okay, so it is, is. there were percentage. a couple of mistakes. Yeah, that, that right there should not be what we're looking at. There was actual numbers that I had used in the pie chart. I don't know why they showed that way, so I can correct that and get that back. All right, to the so the pie board. should correspond to the chart. That's correct. Okay, um, and then I know you indicated nine months, 87 outages. Do you have handy the average length of time for those 87 I outages? I don't, but we can certainly get that. You know, yeah, because if it's an hour, no big deal. If it's a couple of days, well, that's a different and every story. outage will be. I think um, we had over 30 outages that were 10 customers or less. So you have to factor in the number of customers as well if you want to look at duration. So we can give you an average of the number of customers, but that would be a little misleading. But we can look at the average duration for <coughs> outages and. I think service. that would be helpful. <laughs> Certainly. Um, and then, I also. Um, wonder this is for nine months from 19 for from April 19 to basically last week or last month have they gone up significantly in Sturbridge our outages um, from the previous do you have data on what it was in 2017 18 we did pull data for two for five years in 2017 and 2019 were both years where outages peaked. Uh, was that in our packet? Did I no, miss it? No, but I can, I can do it. Okay, that. so they, that, you're saying it was more than 87, is that what you're saying? Or Well, that's not a full year either, and we did a, a look at the full year. The reason we don't have a full year is that Jeff and I began discussing this probably in July or sometime around there, and he said, you know, we're, we're having a lot of outages, can you take a look at the data? So we looked at the data, and the, and the, the um, the data actually did show, but it was it was quiet before April, but there was a big chunk in winter because we had a, a, a lot of storms, especially March. We had three storms in the month of March. So we <laughs> left that data as really storm-related data and then began looking where outages started picking up, which was April 24th. So we looked at, he had, and he had asked, over the past few months, we've seen a, an increase in outages, so can you look at that? So I went and looked at, a couple months back and that was I saw it started picking up in April and I used that data going forward but we can certainly give yep. data based just, on I think because it's sounding a little more complicated just 
In 2017, how many outages? 2018, how many outages? 2019, so we get a sense of Certainly. whether they're going up or down, regardless of whether it's winter or tree related or just total, so we can see, because we have been getting more complaints from residents on outages, and I wanna know what the data is. Does it support that it's getting worse or is it not getting worse? I can certainly give you, I'll give you five years worth of data for full year. Nice. And on the equipment related, is that because the, well, I should ask, what is, what do you mean by that? Is that because the equipment is older and needs to be replaced or? No, so not typically. Um, equipment is, it can be a wide range of things and it was in this case. We had two underground failures. So you have underground residential developments with underground cable in them. Um, and there's a good number of those in Sturbridge. So it's not uncommon to see cable fail in those. We had two transformer, or two or three, if I remember correctly, um, transformer-related outages in that number. Um, and we, uh, you have cutouts. Cutouts are devices, if you hear a bang in your neighborhood and the power goes out, a cutout is a device that opens up. And it's usually, and it's not an excuse, it is actually a squirrel that gets electrocuted on the line and the, the wire gets <coughs> faulted so that fuse opens up to stop electricity from traveling down and damaging other equipment. Well, there's tons of those out in the system. They call the cutout, and it's a fused cutout, but they fail from time to time, and I think you had two fused cutouts that failed. So it's not uncommon to see those either. So it's really an aggregate of equipment. Okay. It's, that's not an uncommon number to see in a town for that length of time. Thank Great you. questions. Mike? Thank yeah. you. I basically have three, three questions. Uh, one uh, is uh, coordination with our tree warden. Uh, many of the trees that, that you cut are uh, public shade trees. So uh, is there, do you document which trees you, you're planning to cut and get the uh, okay from the tree warden and yes. uh, that, that sort of thing? Um, yeah, um, every every tree that we cut down, we document that it's going that it needs to be cut down, and we explain why. Um, so, I, I know a lot of the trees recently have been oaks that it were killed by gypsy moth. Mm -hmm. um, so we do a full analysis based on uh, industry hazard tree standards to, um, and they're done by a certified arborist. Yeah, um, I, yeah. I just wanted to make the point that. Uh, that there is some coordination there and you don't just go cutting any tree you want. Uh, it's a, uh, there, there, the, mm -hmm. it's our tree warden that makes the determination that it's a dangerous tree and mm -hmm. then you get permission to cut it. Yes, we get permission to remove every tree that we yeah. ultimately I remove. just wanted the public to know that, yes. that there is a process there. Uh, the second question is uh, about stumps within the public way what what's the process there uh, if there's a stump left along the edge of the road do you come and grind the stump or do any anything to remove stumps um i i don't know all the details about stump removal typically mm -hmm. speaking the stump is the responsibility of the property owner national grid doesn't typically remove stumps yeah, I know I, I, I've got an issue with that, you know, if you're cutting the tree, the, sh the, uh, the area around where the tree was should be, in my opinion, leveled off in uh, some reasonable manner and, and uh, graded over so that it's, you know, not unsightly or, da or even dangerous if somebody could st trip over a stump or something like that. Once you cut it down, uh, and uh, so and particularly within a public way because uh, of liability reasons for both National Grid and the town. So um, I, I think it's important to, to note that the, even though we do maintain vegetation along those lines, we mm -hmm. don't own the vegetation. We don't own those trees. Those are owned by private homeowners, the town, and we maintain those trees in order to maintain or improve our electric reliability um, mm -hmm. but we don't 
we don't own them. We don't have a right to maintain them. We're, we need permission to either from the property owner or the town to do all of that work. And by removing those trees, that provides a tremendous safety benefit to the town as well. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we try to share in the costs somewhat when, we, when it comes to removing hazard trees. Okay, well, it, it's a policy thing that the Board of Selectmen can discuss, mm -hmm. but it is, I, I do have an issue with, you know, cutting trees and not completing the job. Okay, and, and who's responsible for it? We, that's a matter of, that we can discuss. Uh, my, my third thing is, actually, I was reading uh, a uh, study that was done uh, a few years ago, a statewide study about undergrounding um, some of the uh, critical areas within the state where, where you have uh, electric uh, distribution systems that might not be as accessible. Uh, for example, we have, uh, you know, in 408AL1, it, it leaves the substation, goes across uh, the Quinnebog River and almost immediately joins up with our uh, a major uh, rail uh, trail that uh, it's in the area and uh, continues <coughs> down that rail trail uh, through Old Sturbridge Village or and I'm you know I'm just throwing out there is National Grid doing some undergrounding and uh, critical areas because you really don't have good accessibility to those to that anyhow as as far as maintaining that line and have you have you done anything like that doing undergrounding where where you really don't have good access and trees could fall on on the lines and so forth so i'm not um i'm not completely sure of how exact you know location that you're talking about um but you know, we do put our wires underground in certain locations where they do make, make perfect sense or where they're requested. You know, mm -hmm. by new developments, say, you know, residential development says, yeah, we want our wires underground. We want to it that way, and that's fine. Um, in areas like, you know, um, Main Street through Sturbridge on Route 20, I know that there was some discussion about putting that underground. Um, that carries a very, very significant cost. And we, we realize, you know, it's, it's something that the town is interested in and ha it's been brought up, but um, we, can't, we can't put all of our wires underground. It would, be, it would be great if we could reduce tree-related outages um, by putting wires underground, but the cost of that aren't something that's going to, <coughs> that's expected to even out so that it's efficient. And set aside, you know, the fact that putting wires underground isn't foolproof. You know, as you see in some of the outages that we discussed earlier, cables fault all the time. <coughs> um, you know, I see, it, I see it every day in the reports that we get, you know, cables are not foolproof. Um, mm -hmm. You won't see trees hitting them, but they are not foolproof. Um, so we haven't been over studies for this exactly. But um, we've, we've done work where we can. I will add that <clears throat> our tariff requires that we provide the least cost to serve. And undergrounding wires is exponentially, for National Grid and most utilities that I've ever spoken with, undergrounding is exponentially more expensive than going overhead. And the mm -hmm. Department of Public Utilities would not want us using that as a typical approach unless there's such hazards that we had to do it or the customer is paying for that when communities do want to place wires that are already overhead underground the community actually has to pay that cost and typically they'll go for a grant or or some means of being able to do that because it is so it's mm -hmm. very expensive to place utilities underground whether it's electric or telephone or fiber or any type of electrical undergrounding mm -hmm. or undergrounding, even gas. 
So the answer is you haven't really been doing any undergrounding? Only in areas where communities have bylaws where new developments will have underground service or if we're required by a bylaw such as in the city of Worcester anything that's going to be in the street if it has to be in the street has to be underground within a two mile radius of City Hall and that's a 1901 ordinance mm -hmm. so it has to be a requirement that we cannot deliver least cost to serve because the community has created a requirement of that so the customer requesting the service would pay for the undergrounding. The department does not want the ratepayer paying for that when it could be a lesser cost to go with overhead mm -hmm. installations. So the answer to my question is you don't do undergrounding unless Correct. the customer pays for it. Correct, sir. Okay. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah well, that was a, uh, you know, state a study by the DPU that that was done in 2014 and they recommended that that there be some in, in critical areas where mm -hmm. you know, but apparently that's not being done thank you that was my third question Depends on what a critical area is I know when Sturbridge um, was looking into it it was for aesthetics mm -hmm. you know and the uh, price tag on it was astronomical. Yeah. Um, even passing it on to the rate. only the customers in that area, it was it was millions. So, brand new construction may be a little different, mm -hmm. um, but when you underground what's already there, you mm -hmm. it's laborious. You need easements, you need permits. That's not costly, but it's time consuming. And some projects take years and years to get off the ground because of easements themselves but it's always going to be very expensive much more expensive to do underground than it is overhead okay mm -hmm. anyone else I just had Chase? a few questions um, in 2018 at town meeting we provo we provided close to four hundred thousand dollars in tree trimming for the gypsy moth for safety of roads and wires and I see that you cut close to two hundred and five trees um, due to the gypsy moths is would that was that what we paid for is that addition to what we that's addition isn't it? that's an addition to the trees we removed that's addition okay cool and the in the work that's in the queue what's a timeline you think to, to do is it this year next year or? that is this year this year that yes. works okay thank you Priscilla, did you have? Um, no, I think he's answered them all. Um, they came all this way. I'm the one who asked for you to come because a lot of residents had um, raised the questions of wasn't lightning, it wasn't doing the storms, why are we losing power? And I think you've kind of given those answers. So thank you for coming. You're welcome. I apologize for the power chart being incorrect, but I will correct that. No, that's okay. Close enough. Yeah, it gives us an idea. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. You have mentioned the street lights to them, haven't you? Um, yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. Do you have any questions of us? I don't. I thank you for your patience, and we are focused on outages in Sturbridge. Okay. Thank you for coming in. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. You too. You too. Okay. Next. We need to vote to sign the 2020 seasonal population increase estimation form. Now, when our town clerk filled this out, she put the present population, which is not the estimated summer population. So we need to change the number. Um, has, Priscilla, has, has our population dropped? Because the last time I had asked or checked into the population, it was in the area of around 9,800 plus, and, and really edging 10,000. And now it's like 95, and it seems to me like it's a drop. And I'm just curious, ha have we dropped 300 people somewhere? I don't think so. I think it's just what number we use. I think yeah. it's trying to get, trying to consistently use the same number. And I don't know what we've used in the past. This one was based upon registered voters, non and pe 
registered voters and people that aren't registered that the clerk has living in town right the street directory pretty much so we just have to look at what's the official number and go with that I have has the police chief been asked about this number because I just remember this at one time when he was here he's put input uh, ha having the number is f much higher than yes that. much higher it, if I want to dare say if I recall it hits close to 20,000 oh I think it's been, right? over. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's been, been over yeah it's been over that right since I've been here it's been yeah. over always been over 20,000 yeah. yeah. so if this is our seasonal how much we increase in my if I'm understanding right the seasonal increase correct it's supposed to be the seasonal, seasonal. increase yeah okay so to me that's like 15,000 too little yeah <laughs> doesn't cover us um, so could we um, get a new number and we can what vote. number would you like 23,000 <laughs> oh 23,122 <laughs> okay point five yeah yeah we'll bring it back next time with, yeah. with a revised number yeah we'll vote That's then fine. yeah take a look what we voted last minutes? year yeah I tried to find last year's I couldn't find it really oh and we did have a we'll figure it out I'm sure we had a vote yeah we vote every year I, and, it, and it was higher than much higher. oh yeah it's always been okay next we have a review of host community benefit agreements for sale retail sale excuse me of marijuana Jeff you want to jump in please thank you madam chair and board um, we've spent the last few weeks revising the agreements based upon the board's meeting several weeks ago uh, Nicole Costanza is here this evening to uh, answer any legal questions on the agreements, but we think we've covered what the board wanted us to cover. We've reviewed the agreements with all three applicants. They've responded with their suggested adjustments. Those are before you this evening as well. So every applicant's agreement before you, they're prepared to sign. Um, we've done some research on other host community agreements in other communities, and that comparative spreadsheet is in your packet as well. So we believe that we've addressed uh, the items from our last meeting and we'd be happy to answer any specific questions and I know Nicole's here for that as well, as well as Jean. Okay, questions, Priscilla? We can raise questions off of these uh, host agreements, correct? Yes. Okay, um, I went through it again <laughs> for like the 150th time, like everybody else did and there's two things that um, came up for me on um, caregivers um, page seven it's section f number three the last line in the paragraph says that um, utilizing charcoal and or carbon filters at all exhaust points to mitigate odors the company agrees that all retail products for sale shall be prepackaged to reduce odor impacts. And as I look at 253 organic, same place, page six on that one, um, they only have as well as a carbon filtered internal air system to mitigate odors. So um, I have a question on that. Why is one one way and one doesn't have it? Because 253 will not have all prepackaged items. Okay, so are they going to make it there type thing? They'll, oh. they'll, they'll have some are open flour. Are they producing anything there? They're not manufacturing, but there so. are open flour. Okay, not knowing anything about this, does that smell come out? Can it come outside in any way? So um, 253 might be um, more better able to address what their plans are but from our meetings with them it's our understanding that they will um, have jars to allow their customers to smell certain products and they will be packaging um, each product almost as if you go into a grocery store and say I want three grapes as opposed to two they will do that um, in the store rather than having everything prepackaged, so five grapes in one package, two in another. They'll have um, their system set up that you can actually choose how much you want. They'll package there and then they'll put it um, in a sealed container with the label dosages on it through a computerized system. Um, and so we worked with each of the applicants to negotiate these agreements. We went back and forth with them. Um, and this is what 
253 Organic said that they were going to do and that they could agree to. So you'll see that each of these agreements has some different nuances. Each provision isn't exactly the same, and that's based on our negotiations with each applicant. Okay, well, while you're on there, on page three on 253, um, annual, on my copy, I don't know about anybody else's, annual community benefit payment, is that 2500000 Because I really can't tell what the number is. On, on page three? On page three. Um, on my copy. No, it's deleted. The, there's a line there's through There's a line through it, so that's what I don't. 20. Oh. So it went from 20 to 50,000. It's 50,000. That's what I couldn't tell what it was because yeah. both of them are okay. So it's 50,000. Okay. All right. Yeah, well, some of the it was like those editing marks didn't disappear when we turned off editing. Okay. And, and the only other thing that um, I see um, between 253 and caregivers is that caregivers, as well as HEAL, are willing to not do um, brownies, ice cream, et cetera, um, in, their, in theirs. Both HEAL and, or, and um, caregivers are willing not to do the desserts, whereas 253 does not state that. Those are my two biggest things. <coughs> I don't want to go next, but can I just um, okay. address something that Priscilla, just because I did tour the different facilities and I know you weren't able to. Yeah. So um, just by my own observation, the retail store for Farm 353 where you can, as you kind of expressed mm -hmm. it, it's not all prepackaged. Mm -hmm. There is some smell in, in the, you know, it's a, be it's a beautiful retail sh store, but you can smell cannabis you know, you know the product it, I didn't notice that it permeated outdoors that's what I was gonna ask. I, I didn't notice that but you can certainly tell when you walk in um, that there is a smell that is not I would assume would not be at a facility that, where it's all prepackaged but you didn't I can only you know assume that but you that didn't point. smell it outside nope. no I didn't but okay. you can smell it inside okay. and we know Miri has a good nose for I it. have a good nose <laughs> yes, but I assume that at another facility well I'm gonna uh, smell it at all when it's prepackaged right. yeah. yeah Chase and my question is along those lines and I'm gonna gear more towards 253 that's the charcoal filter that you'll be able to smell it inside the store but that charcoal filter will stop it from being outside of the store correct you won't be able to smell it outside yeah. okay okay because it doesn't say that here yeah. I, I, the reason I raised it is because um, caregivers states that it mitigates external orders. This one does not. We always assume that as part of the special permit process, we're going to have to demonstrate that anyway. But uh, that is what the, the filter process does. Is to make sure there's no external. But that language being added would be advantageous, obviously, to the town. Okay, just from my standpoint, um, just as we as I was reading it, that's the only reason I raised it is because if asked the question, th because they differed. One said had it, one didn't. So it's a question that had to be raised. It was more implicit, and we're happy to make it explicit. Fine, that's fine. There is there is also um, on page 11 an order control technology provision that was added to 253 Organics host community agreement to address those odor concerns, given the fact that um, 253 had proposed a retail operation where they would not be prepackaging. And so um, we did take those odor considerations in there and did request some odor language. And paragraph 16 there is some odor control so. technology language that was agreed to that will not be in the other agreements because again, they will have prepackaged items. Yeah. I'm good. Thank you, Mayor. Chase. Chase. <coughs> I have me. no questions. Mike. Um, I don't have any more questions. Okay, Mary. Um, I have a few observations and, and, and such. Just for the thank you, um, Jeff. This chart was very helpful. But for those of you um, looking at it, just, there's just one mistake under police training. Um, it says yes for 253 organics. Yes for heal. 
and there's no yes near caregiver patient and, and that should be a yes as well mm. yes. they're also providing three um, officers to be trained yes yes, yes and it's blank yes. yeah and yeah I have the money next to it I just didn't have the yes yeah but it, yeah. Yes, I, understand. I get it but it's kind of like yeah. an important mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. I get um, and I'm just gonna state for the record that I personally am disappointed and I know the rest of the board probably doesn't feel like this although Selectman Jimmis has indicated some support for it that there wasn't traffic studies done yeah. other than heels which was done as part of the um, planning board process because it would have been a tool to help us determine what location is better than another um, and we're not experts and I think all the applicants um, think their location is the best and if that was the case that probably would have uh, buttressed their argument and we don't have the benefit of that so um, and I'd like the record to reflect that um, you know the, the thing with with this industry is there's a high high demand for it because a lot of communities don't have it a lot of the communities in Worcester County voted it out so until as we all know there are more it's going to put a heavy traffic demand on the towns that have it especially Sturbridge because of 84 and 90 um, and I know I had referenced a um, newspaper article when cultivate opened in Leicester and I wasn't able at the time to have it but um, the name of the article um, it's by the globe new pot shops neighbors say traffic jams are awful now granted I know this was on opening day but what's very relevant excuse me about this article is that it appears on the second page cultivate said cultivate and the company said it served about a thousand customers on its opening day so this and I welcome the board to read this this is what a thousand customers did to Lester and we have now they've limited it to 600 but we run the risk of having an opening day all the time and it starts off hell absolute mayhem have it ground zero they had an emergency meeting at the town hall on Monday night so I, I do have a lot of concerns with the amount of customers because while everybody you know was willing to limit it to 600 we're giving two licenses so I guess best case scenario for the retail shops because of the money and maybe worst case scenario for traffic people who concerned about traffic that's 1200 cars a day and this is what a thousand cars a day did to Lester so um, and it's going to be the board of selectmen that, that are going to be held accountable because we are the elected officials and when the traffic hits it's going to be why did the board of selectmen allow 1200 cars a day when we already had notice of what a thousand cars a day did so um, you know this has been terrible it, they, it it just goes on and on and, and if anyone in select one would like to read it um, well, I read it when it came out but yeah well but the reports now it's down I mean oh and course. it's been brought up by some of the proponents also when I mentioned it that it's just similar to the casinos there's more of them so the customer base reduces there's more of the marijuana so the customer I, base is re I reduced. don't disagree and it will be more so when Connecticut opens up but you hold know, on you talk, still uh, wait a minute oh. though the, the point the point is though we are agreeing in our host agreement to allow that many customers we wouldn't be able to call them back and say you know what it's just too much because we agreed to 600 for each customer that that's my point for we're agreeing oh, no. Well, well for, I'm sorry yes for each applicant we've agreed to a maximum of 600 and I'm asking the board perhaps to revisit that figure Wait, hold um, on. I'm good. I, may I Jeff say something that's true but in the agreement we put in there if there are impacts that we could not anticipate we can revisit those things I saw that language yes but you know personally I think 1200 cars a day to e agree to that as a threshold amount is too high um, wait a minute chase um, because I have a question on that I mean I've read these several times <laughs> it's almost like a novel now um, but under heels I didn't see where the 600 was mentioned 
It's in it. I mean, I could have missed it, but it's. Well, it's in the customers per day on your comparison. Yeah, but that's yeah, but that's a comparison. Oh, it's oh, that's not in the agreement. No, I, I mean it's on, in the agreement. It's on page seven, the page. first paragraph. Yeah, it's part of um, so section I knew it three. Should be there. Yeah. So the restriction is lifted. The company agrees to limit its appointments to no more than 600 customers per day. That's not the right page seven, Mary. I don't know why. Oh, I have a. This is. Did you hand out the clean? This is the page seven you want. You're, in, you're in a draft. That's why. You're not. Yeah, but that's up. You're in yeah, a but draft it too. Yeah, but it she doesn't correspond. Is all I'm trying to say. Yeah. The, the, the chart shows 600. But they they want to see it in the agreement. It's in the agreement. It's, and under this what one, section because. It's under section three. It's under section, section three. Uh, third paragraph. I don't have another one. Section three. Oh, you should have gotten one that was paper clip too. It's in the packet. And that's well, I stapled all mine together. Well, you're this looking one. at the medical. There's a different deal. Okay. Yeah. Underneath. Yeah. It'll be nice when we don't have to read these anymore. Um, so. Well, okay. here's mine. Following okay, up so on. Where? It's on page seven. At the top of the page. Okay. I'll write that down. Yep. It's 600 <laughs> per day. And then um, the applicants had also agreed to on site traffic control as well. Yeah, that's what I wanted to. I, and I think yeah. at the, our last meeting, um, they agreed to traffic control for the first two weeks or longer. Depending I don't have the exact language in front of me. Hold on. Or until the chief, chief. deems right, it and I had commented that I really feel because it's our host agreement, it should be the board of selectmen that lifts that requirement. Subject, of course, typically we'll get a recommendation by the chief of police in everything we do, whether it's manager or whatever. He gives his recommendation, and it's our call. And since we are the signatories of the host agreement, it shouldn't be left up to Chief Ford to lift that. It should be left up to us. And he should provide a recommendation one way or the other. And I, I think I had mentioned that earlier. Um, and then my last comment was um, whatever the amount we agreed to, limiting the amount of customers per day, there's, and I correct, I, I'm sorry if it's here and I, I just didn't see it, but. I didn't see any reporting requirement to show that they are complying with that amount. The only one we have is the annual reporting that relates to financial submissions. No, there's, it's um, in there. Okay, there, there, so show me where I don't there see There is it. language. It's in the one, two, three. I'm looking at, because it's the one that I have open right now, caregiver okay. patient on page seven. Your and caregiver, you said? I, I have okay. the caregiver agreement open, and it's on the, the, clean, the clean version. Um, page 7, it says, the company shall submit quarterly reports to the Board of Selectmen for purposes of monitoring the aforementioned appointment restriction. Okay, thank you. Just show, I'm sorry, just what paragraph again? What section and paragraph? The, the third paragraph in section 3. Um, yeah, the third. It's the sentence right after the 600... Um, customers per day restriction and okay. um, caregiver okay, had yeah. actually agreed so, yeah. to um, do a scale yeah, to address some of the board's concerns and to limit to four to 400 500 then go up to 600 okay, on there so if you'll see that thank you I missed that paragraph. and I was very yeah. pleased to see that's the other comment I had that they are agreeing to a graduated mm -hmm. um, yeah. approach which does mitigate traffic and I didn't notice that that was in the other one mm -hmm. do you think um, under annual reporting you can also show a cross reference to that re kind of reporting as well because it was that sentence is there but it, I'm sorry it kind of got lost so when you show annual reporting the company shall file an annual report in correction with its annual and say something like and as noted in sec in paragraph three it shall also submit quarterly payments to show that the maximum amount of customers has not exceeded the amount agreed to in the host agreement or, or similar words and I think it's a lot easier to find it that way um, so those were those are my comments 
There is. Oh, okay, I see what you're what you're saying. Just because I flipped to the annual reporting and I only saw the financial stuff, mm -hmm. so maybe just a reference to it, so it it's a little bit easier to see. Oh, Jeff. There are motions on the dais for you to review and possibly use. Uh, you can add to those motions the two amendments that Sergeant <coughs> Dowling mentioned, but I'd also like to tack on that also that um, any legal review fees will be, they'll have to pay for any legal review fees that are outstanding at the time of the year, the board's action. Can I, I'm sorry, just to one more thing. <laughs> okay, under enforcement, um, the company, uh, this is the same for all of them pretty much. Um, the company acknowledges and agrees that any violation of any term or condition of this agreement may result in penalties, and it goes on, sh and the BOS shall retain the authority to deviate from this pe these penalty guidelines where the circumstances are appropriate. Is there any language that says including but not limited to the revocation of the license itself? Because I feel like all of this deals with us imposing penalties, but um, after any subsequent violations, the town will seek to have the facility cease operations. Is that the equivalent of revoking their license? So um, just one thing for clarification, the enforcement provisions aren't all the same. We do have different language for um, caregiver uh, with respect to the, the fines and the- Yes, I'm talking about the other so, language. Yes, um, so the, the town isn't issuing a license for the operation of these establishments. It's, it's coming the, from the it's CCC. From the, seat, from the CCC. Okay. The town can certainly report any types of non-compliance. It can also seek to terminate the um, host community agreement if there is a violation, continued violations. Okay, that, of okay, the so agreement. bingo. Is, is there language that actually says we have the right to pursue um, terminating the host agreement? I guess revoking the license was the wrong thing. That's the CCC, I get that. But where is the language um, that says basically, you know, the host agreement is over? is done. I think I saw that. I see that, and I'm asking, does that mean any subsequent violations will seek to have the facility cease operations? That's a little bit different than terminating the host agreement. Yeah, there is one for Is there? Mary, on uh, caregiver, on page 14, top line, after any subsequent violation, the town will seek to have the facility cease operations. Right, that's what I saw. How about the other one? I saw that, yeah. and I'm asking council, is that the same as terminating the host agreement? Yeah, so we would seek to, to terminate the host community agreement um, and close the operations. All right, so maybe just language that says that, because I think an argument can be made that ceasing the operations may not be long term, it may not be an end to the host agreement itself. So, including but not limited to terminating the host agreement. Because that, that language I saw at two so it doesn't give a length of time though no, that, that they're ceasing operations. Mm -hmm. um, so the, it's a little bit of a nuance. And, um, oh, I'm sorry, Mary, I, I don't know. No, I didn't say anything. Okay, can I, I, I know we have a couple of motions and pr people are probably at the point of determining which one, um, but I'm going to um, make a motion that the Board of, Con Board of um, Selectmen consider requiring a reduction from 600 customers per day in the host agreements. To, do you, to 400 each. 
which would be a total of 800. Is that your motion? Yeah, my motion is um, that the Board of Selectmen um, modify the host community agreement uh, draft to reflect a maximum of 400 customers per day. I'll second that. Discussion? Um, uh, OK, Mike, you go no, first. No, you go ahead. Oh. Uh, for beauty. Yeah, they, well, I, you know, I've you know, um, I've done tra you know traffic analysis as part of my career, and the difference between uh, 400 and 600, I mean, isn't it, with with the locations that are being proposed, that's not going to make a big difference. I mean, uh, you know, if if there was a restaurant put in at any of these locations, the traffic impact would be far, far greater than, uh, than what these facilities are. I mean, like to the tune of four or five, six times as much traffic generation uh, for maybe a 100 seat restaurant or something. So, um, you know, and I was even at our last meeting talking about even further restrictions during peak hour of, uh, of traffic volume, which um, you know, would help more than just r limiting the total daily uh, amount of customers they can have. I, I, I think 600 is is quite restrictive as it is uh, for the si for the facilities that they've designed and everything. And um, you know, I can't see a huge traffic impact uh, if they're limiting it to 600. The uh, and the. the <laughs> One, one thing I have to say, I've talked at great length with the chairman of uh, the uh, Board of Selectmen in, uh, in Leicester about, you know, the issues they've had with traffic and so forth. And uh, they were turning away a lot of people that didn't get served the first uh, week or so of operation at, at the uh, facility in Leicester. There were people just showing up. Uh, unannounced and uh, they you know the, the I've, I've seen it driving by the the police were just turning them away and uh, making them leave because they didn't have the capability of serving I, I would say there is probably you know four times as many customers the first few days in Leicester as what actually got served uh, at that time so but I, I don't think it's unreasonable. 600, I don't think, is an uh, uh, unreasonable amount at any of these locations. Uh, the, you know, you know actu actually, the, the only one, after looking at the traffic study uh, for, um, for Hill, is really not just Hill, but the uh, amount of traffic going uh, eastbound on Route 20 at that location that actually do make the left turn into uh, the the, uh, the th place there uh, they uh, the, they just redid that this the state did and they should have put a left turn uh, slot in in there but they didn't and uh, but they you know uh, at at the other two locations I don't I don't see where there's uh, any significant traffic impact, but uh, okay. you know, and it, it, that will come out during the uh, special permit. Site plan. Can, yeah. I, can I the, comment uh, on some of Can you oh, just sure. one minute on the traffic? Um, all three proponents had actually reduced the number of customers. Um, we know we have a traffic problem everywhere in town. Um, 600 is customers is not exorbitant. You look at Yankee Spirits, um, they get about 1,500 on an average Saturday customers. Um, they get um, busy December Saturday, they can hit 5,000 mm -hmm. customers. On a busy Saturday in the summer, they get maybe between 2,500 and 3,500 customers. And I've been part of that crowd. <laughs> and Haven't we all? But it hasn't been 
you know, it hasn't been really impact. You know, I didn't have to line up at Fakwa Road and wait to get through the lights. It, it flows, you know. But I think, you know, I give the proponents credit for coming and limiting the number of customers. I think Mary was first. Yes, Mary. Mary. Oh, okay, I just want to um, correct, clarify that we're going to be signing two host agreements. So when we keep saying 600 customers, 600 customers, it's not true. We're agreeing to 1,200 customers a day because we're signing two separate host agreements and we're telling both signatures that you can have 600 customers a day and you can have six, so it's 12. And my motion reduces the amount of cars with all due respect by 400, 200 each. So that's just simple math. And with all due respect, I've never Googled and seen as much complaints about one industry and the traffic. When you open a new restaurant, you don't have people saying absolute mayhem, havoc, ground zero. And that's what a thousand customers did. Um, we had a guest watching the Super Bowl with us, young, and from Northampton, and they had a medicinal that is converting to uh, recreational. And I just asked him point blank, 23 years old, I mean, sure, he probably smokes cannabis, has no, you know, stigma attached to the industry. And I said, you know, what is it like? And he said, Mrs. D, it is a traffic nightmare because um, that location was okay for medicinal, but it can't handle it. So traffic is a big concern in a way that just doesn't hit the restaurants, um, with all due respect. So I'm happy that, that uh, Priscilla has backed it because when the traffic hits, we're going to have to be ready to handle um, the impact of 1,200 cars. Priscilla? I, I agree with her uh, for a lot of reasons, but one of which, I remember when Panera was opening in town, and there was a panic that there might be 80 cars in the drive through in any given day. And we were talking about 80 cars at a drive through Now we're talking 1,200 cars somewhere in Sturbridge, regardless of where the locations are. And um, yeah, you know, Yankee Spirits has, can have 15,000, so what? It's not the new thing, okay? And there's liquor, plenty of liquor stores in town. But this is new, and Connecticut doesn't have it. So you know we can pull them from Connecticut on all ends. And so until Connecticut decides it's going to legalize it, I don't know, and I'm gonna ask Selectman Dowling, and I'm gonna support you regardless, but would you consider saying maybe to 400 in a for a time frame and seeing how that goes and then reconsider perhaps raising it? I was going to add language which would set it at four and we will revisit it in a reasonable amount of time if that's not a problem. But I mean, we, we can, you know, the language would have to be legal. Way. The, you know. the language, yeah, I mean, I think there's enough in here on other provisions where we revisit things. Um, I think we revisit our need for police detail if the traffic can accommodate. So certainly, I mean, if 400 cars, if 800 cars a day is no problem for Sturbridge, I have no problem inserting language that we can revisit the host agreement. But it, again, it's a lot easier to start strict yeah. than it is to go the other way because we will not be able to do so after the fact. We, we can only go one way after that. We agree to six, and uh, we're not going to be able to get either of these applicants back and have them agree to four. It's not going to happen. This is our opportunity to protect our town and our residents from the kind of traffic we will get. And, you know, Lester had a 1,000. It, it shut the town down. And I understand they turned people away, but that is according to Cultivate, they served a 1,000 customers. We have 84 and 90, and we're going to be a lot more popular than Leicester, and we're going to be a lot more popular than Northampton. You also have 131 coming from Connecticut as well. Right, and we are on the border of Connecticut where it's still illegal. So it's going to be a very heavily um, supported business, and I think that we need to protect our residents from the traffic impact to the extent that we can. Chase. I just wanted to add my two cents to everything. I'm against any other restrictions on these two businesses. Um, I do feel like 
when Leicester opened. I totally understand the traffic concerns, and I totally understand what happened in Leicester was a nightmare. But I still go back to they opened two stores in the entire Northeast, and it was more of a celebration. There was food trucks. There was people playing music. It was completely out of control. And Mike is right. They turned down a ton of customers that day. And if you go to Cultivate in Leicester now, they now have on-site parking. You used to always have to park in, and they shuttled you to the building. That's out now. You pull up, you go inside, and you're out of there. And there's maybe six or seven cars in the parking lot while you're there. Um, if you look on 146, they just opened a new store in Millbury. That's the first store open that gets all the Rhode Island business. The parking lot is empty. It's, it's not like that initial celebration that one went on, which I think the state dropped the ball with, and I've said that in the past at these meetings. So I am against any additional restrictions on these businesses. Okay, so we have a motion, we have a second. All in favor of the motion? All opposed? Motion is defeated. Okay, now we have our option to vote this evening. I do want to say something before we vote that the board appreciates all the proponents have done working with us and I hope you feel the same way. I mean, we try, but it doesn't always come across as that. Um, Okay, board ready or? Can we do them one at a time? Like, I well, mean, are we, well, I guess my question is. We have, well, we have to pick two. Two. Two, okay, so can we, as we talk about them, can we do one, vote on it, then another one and vote on it, rather oh. than a twofer? Oh, no, they're separate votes, okay. yeah. All no. right. Madam Chair, if I may though, I know we voted on the, um, the restriction on the amounts of customers per day, but there were three other provisions that were requested to have changes to the agreements for paragraphs three um, with respect to um, the chief being able to, to lift certain controls with respect to paragraph um, 19 for <coughs> annual reporting and uh, a, with respect to section 20 for those changes that the board as a whole would like made to the host community agreements? Did the board want to vote on that? Okay, does the board want to vote on those? Somebody? Uh, uh, Mary, uh, you made, you were the ones that I'm made the question, so why don't you make, make a motion? Okay. I'll second, uh, I'll I'll second Oh, good, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna make a motion that the changes I suggested to all of the host agreements as stated in the record um, be pursued on behalf of the town. And so, I'll second. second. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay. Okay, somebody want to make a motion? Just pick one and mm -hmm. is sure. That, is that what we're doing? <laughs> All right, I make a motion to grant 253 Organic um, a host community license. Okay, I'll second that one. Discussion, Priscilla? Um, I can't support that one for two reasons. One is the desserts, because um, I thought we were clear on that we didn't like them. Um, the other one was, um, I think that the traffic there um, is going to be impacted heavily, and I'm talking about Route 131. And 131 is congested uh, at any time of this, on any time of the day, you see the you see the traffic coming down, coming 131 into Sturbridge, on any given day at four o'clock, three o'clock, whatever, and it's congested. And I think adding more traffic to that is going to be more difficult. So I will vote against this one. Okay. Do I have a chance for discussion or just? Oh yeah, I mean we're. Right. Yeah, Open to we're deliberating. All right. Um, uh, <laughs> the reason that I felt 253 Organic Deserve one is currently they are the only applicant to have an open retail marijuana store running. Um, I toured the Grove facility, their retail establishment. I toured
toured Heels retail establishment and I toured uh, caregiver grow facility and their retail establishment. Um, uh, I like the location of the old Paletti's building. It's an existing building that we could fill. Um, I think that's more important to fill an existing building before we go and build new. Um, the traffic concerns for me, I, you know, when Paletti's was open at lunch, there was, a, there was a lot of people there. And I don't see more people being with the app there than what was shopping at lunch. Um, and their, their host community agreement numbers, I mean, they, if they have a violation, they shut down for the day, the numbers were positive, and I'm, I'm going to vote for 253. I am. Um, oh. Jeff? Uh, to go back, thank you. To go back to uh, Selectman Supernaut's comment, they did adjust their hours of operation per day as requested, so they are consistent with the other operators. <laughs> I, I just wanted I, to answer something to him. That's all. For well, I just want okay. to. I did too, but you That's can okay. go, Priscilla. Oh, I was just going to say um, I agree with. Uh, I understand the desire to fill a building that's empty, but I also we if, on Saturday we talked about a blight um, bylaw, and where the old mobile station is, that's blight. And as you're coming into Sturbridge, and you're going at that light, it would be so much nicer to see a nice new building there. Um, that and it doesn't look like an abandoned piece of property that nobody cares about to me it's it's our pristine area it's our downtown or our central part of our community and that's as much as I like to see buildings filled um, I also don't like the way it looks currently so that's adds to my thinking well, and wait a minute I'm a little confused on the way what looks currently like the way you know you know where the mobile station was oh it, that, that i thought you was no i mean i understand the the desire to fill an existing building but i also we did talk about blight and to me that's blight yeah. um well don't forget priscilla we have two licenses oh i know and i'd oh, like I know. you know, know chase's comment i was going to make it on the existing building it's a shame to have it just sit there i mean this is a perfect use for it the traffic will take care of itself i know i don't worry about traffic like other people paletti's had busy saturdays they had even busier things when they had anniversaries and stuff with mm -hmm. the hot dog man out there and everything <laughs> and you know in the agreement they can they'll have police they can you know get off-site parking and bust them in so i personally I'm in agreement. Well, I did second the motion, Mary. Uh, I'm going to um, ag agree with Selectman Jimmis for a number of reasons. For I just want to start by saying um, the actual applicants themselves are very knowledge, very knowledgeable, um, true professionals, and I did appreciate touring their retail and cultivation facility. <laughs> but 131 is just two lanes, one lane going one way and the other one going the other. I. It's our access to Shaw's, our town common. I feel like that road is the road our residents use the most. And I also had a lot of concern, and nothing's changed from three or four months ago when I said, can we accommodate affordable housing and this facility on 131? And you know, I respect them for going to the businesses and getting their support, but two doors down, like one telephone pole away, we gave an extension to the f affordable housing. That's going to be, you know, by and large, families, children. And I don't think that the, re the best spot for a retail facility is being a neighbor with affordable housing. I mean, we try to, you know, the, we couldn't have them close to a school. I remember when the medicinal went in, they could only be within, I don't know, not a mile from this. I don't remember what the criteria was, because the idea is to not, um, you know, make it attractive to kids. And I know that I had the benefit of raising my family in a residential area. If that affordable housing goes in that commercial area, I don't think their neighbor should be a um, retail store. So I don't think that was the best location. Um, as far as the Paletti's building. 
I also agree with Selectman Jimmis in that the vacant lot by Friendlies has been that way for, yep. I don't know, like 20 years or, or more, Long decades, time. and nothing has ever been done with it. The, it well, it, it's been vacant a lot longer than the Paletti's building. Maybe that's a safer mm -hmm. statement to mm -hmm. make, which is definitely true. The Paletti's building has been a few years. I think that is a nice building that's going to have an easier time getting leased again rather than that lot by friendlies, which has been like that for a long time. So I, if I had to, com you know, if I had to choose between the two, because really the applicants are all professional, I think caregivers chose a better location. Um, and I think that the traffic will probably be less because at least Route 20 has more than one lane. 131 does not. And I appreciate in their host agreement that they were willing to have a graduated, you know, um, the first two weeks only for, I forgot how they did it, but for the first well, month of the first two weeks, they were going to start with 400 and build their way up. So I thought that they were more in tune to at least some of our traffic concerns. I know the whole board didn't feel that way, but I appreciated that change that caregivers gave. gave. I also feel like their hours of operation are less. Um, by two hours a day, it's 11 to 8 rather than 10 to 9. So I think that's also um, less traffic. Two hours a day of less appointments. So um, for a lot of reasons, I, I would have supported caregivers' um, license. I also appreciated that they've changed on more than one occasion what location they were going to have trying to be in tune to the needs of the community. Um, originally they were on Route 20 by the truck stop, mm -hmm. which with all due respect, that end of town I, I, I think could have accommodated the traffic better, <laughs> but our chief didn't. So they changed to a location close to Farm 353 and then they changed again. So I just think that also shows a real willingness to work with the commu community. So given the close proximity to the affordable housing unit, that is my big reason why um, I just, I, I, can't, I can't support it. Mary, to that point, um, the plans for the affordable housing um, take, have taken into consideration, if you went to the hearings, all the traffic and everything, and they did a traffic study. Plus, I am not one that will predicate a decision that can be made now that's beneficial for the town for a proposed project that really doesn't seem to be seeing the light of day. No, but we did but give them a one-year extension, so they were in line okay. first. And we're not holding back. We're, we're asked to compare different locations, the pros and cons. And I would rather have a residential neighbor that are all adults and seniors which is the mobile part, by and large. I don't think they'll have the amount of children that the affordable housing unit could have. So if we have to make a judgment without a traffic study, which I still think is wrong, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to favor the other location. OK, any other ideas? You want me to say something? Only if you want to. Oh, <laughs> OK. I'll, I'll, OK. Uh, <laughs> we have, I, we have the, uh, say you want to. I, I will be brief. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think, um, I, th I think um, that um, I'm in favor of, uh, of all three of the proposals. Really, I, you know, all three have, have done a, a good job uh, in, in presenting, and I think we have some excellent host agreements. So I would be in, in favor of this one, and uh, so I'm going to vote in favor of the motion. Okay, so we have a motion, we have a second, we've had discussion. All in favor then of granting the license to 253 Organic LLC for a retail adult use marijuana at 138 Main Street. All opposed? Three to two, the motion carries. Madam Chair, if I may, um, there were proposed motions 
that we had given the um, town isn't granting licenses the licenses would be granted by the state this is host the agreement. host agreement, host agreement. Yeah. yes the record yeah. will show host agreement, host agreement the correct the word for the record the motion was for hosting. <laughs> yes. i'd like to make a motion motion to uh, oh i'm, I'm sorry, sorry. I, I was also going to make a motion but whoever was had the hand up first i, I heard mike i was okay. really looking okay. I'd like to make a motion to grant, uh, uh, to enter into a host agreement with Caregiver. Um, I think their proposal also was excellent, and, uh, uh, and, and we've got a good host agreement with them. The location is very good. Um, and so uh, my motion is to enter into a host agreement with Caregiver. I would. Uh, you know, add to that. I also would uh, be seeking at some point uh, relief from the uh, for heal uh, from from the commitment that they have mm -hmm. uh, at at some point, maybe either this evening or at a future meeting. Uh, I'll ask council later about that. But uh, I, my motion is to grant uh, or to enter into a host agreement with a caregiver. Yeah. I'll second that. Discussion? Oh, it <laughs> doesn't matter, Mary. I know. It doesn't matter. Mary, Mary. go. Okay, okay. Um, I'm going to, you know, with all due respect, caregivers was my first choice, um, but I'm going to respectfully disagree. And I think as, a, as elected officials, we should be honoring what the wishes of our residents were back when we had the town-wide vote. Not the 150 people that showed up at town meeting, but our town-wide vote that had in excess of 600 people that, with all due respect to the applicants, didn't want any retail shops or cultivation in the town of Sturbridge. And the vote wasn't close. I had hoped to go to see the town clerk, but I was detained and I couldn't see her today. But it was 600 some votes to 400 some votes. It was not close <coughs> by a local standard and they didn't want anyone. So for us to go and enter into three host agreements, I think is really, really not in tuned to what our residents wanted. At least we should be limiting the licenses to two. We had the majority of voters didn't want any and for us to go and give three, I think is really a, a travesty in terms of us being elected officials. I will vote in favor of HEAL. Um, they already had um, the host agreement for medicinal. They've been very cooperative. Their facility is already built. It was our first choice for locations because we had a medical overlay, which we didn't have for retail, it's any commercial area other than the gateway. And um, I think that they should be the second one to have a, a host agreement. But for us to enter into three, I think is, is not being in tune to what our, the wishes of our residents were. Mary, can I just, yeah. we're not entering into. Well, yeah, but that's the root, yes, because yeah. he made his intention perfectly clear that he wants to lift. But also, that he has the agreement that after so many years. Yes, so it, it would be three. So, so it's gonna happen Exactly. I, I agree with Selectman Dowling on this as well. Caregiver was my first choice too, mm -hmm. um, for the reasons that I stated. Now I'm in a conundrum because I really like that location, but if we if we have to stick to two, I do think that we just des heal deserves it because um, they have abided by everything we have wanted all the way down from the, from day one when we started with the medical marijuana. They've abided with everything, and they're going to come into play anyway. And either we're going to do two or we're going to do three. And I, and I agree, if the town wanted two, then that's what we have to do is two. And so we're going to get one by default, and that's not how I understood that it was supposed to go either. Um, Councilor? <coughs> uh, Madam Chair, if I may, just to clarify. So the there is a zoning bylaw limitation that limits the amount of retail, meaning adult use marijuana establishments, to two. Um, so you wouldn't be including the medical establishments when you count for the two um, recreational adult use retail marijuana establishments in town. So 
the board can what? choose to enter into two can uh, I, host Can I comment agreements. on that? Because you weren't the, you weren't the, the um, counselor from KP Law that already came, and we had already asked on more than one occasion mm -hmm. what will happen if we give two licenses not to heal to other applicants. And I think at that point we even had four, one dropped out that wanted to be in the Fisk Hill Plaza. And we were told you give two, but as of right, under the statute, the medical facility can write. So that is going to end up being three um, retail stores. It, so that, that's my point. So and however, if we gave HEAL, um, if we signed a host agreement with HEAL, then it would limit it to two because they would be getting one of the retail ones. So what we said is correct. If we give two, Host, if we sign, enter into two host agreements with caregivers in Farm 353, he'll, when that, more, yeah. when that um, agreement is lifted in year. two years or one year, year. they're not going to have to come to us. They, they're going to be able to convert to retail. Now, if you're saying something different, then I think KP Law is giving us two different no, messages. So I was actually the one who was here last time at that meeting, and just to clarify, um, that was one of the board's concerns. So we have been working with counsel who represents Heal Inc., which holds the medical um, HCA, and with counsel for Heal Sturbridge Inc., it's the same counsel that's representing both. And so what they've proposed is to address that concern that the board has is if the board, and I did propose some um, sample language for a motion for this, that if the board um, were to agree to grant Heal Sturbridge Inc. a um, host community agreement and execute one with them at the same time Heal Inc. would agree to amend their medical agreement to include a provision um, to extend the, the agreements to the life of the provision, excuse me, to the life of the establishment and to include a provision that would prevent them from ever converting. Yes, yeah, we're talking, we, we know that. You're, you're, we're talking about apples and oranges thing. right now. It's, it's two totally different things. My position was the majority of the town didn't want any. So, and I feel the board, if they're listening to their residents, would limit to, to two host agreements, okay? I understand the distinction between Heal Inc. and Heal Sturbridge. That's not, that's not the point, with, right. with all due respect. What I'm saying is if we enter into a host agreement with Farm 353, which was already voted in, and caregivers now, they have a right to convert to a retail store as soon as that five years is yeah. up. So we would have three retail stores in Sturbridge. That was my point. Right. If okay. they're granted um, a host agreement now, we will have two retail stores in Sturbridge. Correct. That, that's, yeah. that's the point, and that's the point I'm trying to drive home with, yeah. with the rest of the resident. And for, you know, um, I think, at the last meeting, I want to put words in your mouth, but you said you know you wanted to see two be successful rather than three, et cetera. I don't think the town of Sturbridge, given 9,500 residents, should be supporting three retail facilities and a medical facility in our small town. I think that's excessive. Okay. Jeff? Just a question. In the event caregiver gets the second host agreement and the heal medical moratorium expires would they have to come back to the board to negotiate a retail host agreement before they could apply to the ccc for retail sales I don't think so. in, in my opinion yes um the statute that talks about conversion says the town cannot have a bylaw that prevents conversion it doesn't say anything that would prohibit the or, or provide that the applicant did not have to come back and get a host community agreement to operate that establishment. So but I, we wouldn't be able so. to refuse. We have it in we writing. We can't refuse it. We can't refuse it. We can't refuse it. We can only negotiate a host agreement, which is two different things. We can negotiate a host agreement, but under the statute, it, it says convert as of right. Mm -hmm. And we have it, it language from, Co from KP Law mm -hmm. Um, saying that we would not be able to stop the conversion. And this goes, this predates um, our current town administrator. Mm -hmm. So 
I really think before we continue to vote, we need clarification on that. Yeah. Because entering into a host agreement is one thing, but the statute says convert as of right. And we also have language from KP law as to what that means. So I don't think we legally could say we're not going to even entertain a host agreement because we only want there to be two retail stores sure, under and, the statute. And just to clarify, I don't believe that that was my response. It's, um, the question was, do they automatically get to convert or do they have to come back and negotiate a host community agreement? So in, in my opinion, they would have to come back before the board to negotiate a host community agreement. Now, the law on, on this topic is evolving. It's, it is very new. There are bills pending with the legislator every day to change the law. There hasn't been a case, as far as I am aware of, um, where there was an establishment that sought to convert and went to the community to uh, negotiate a host community agreement, and that community has denied it on reasonable grounds. Um, I can't tell you what the outcome of that would be, but again, in my opinion, the applicant would still have to come back to the board to negotiate that host community agreement. Yeah, but with, like, again, I, mean, I don't want to keep going at this. We do have in writing that the statute says as of right. And I know there hasn't been a seminal, there hasn't been a case law on it. But I don't think that we would be able to simply say we're not going to negotiate a host agreement because we have two retail stores and that's enough. I think that would probably be considered bad faith. Mm -hmm. So, so um, I, I'm gonna, I agree with her because as I recall, I have. I don't have it in front of me, but as I recall it, there's a given date, and the question at the time was that if the law changed, because at the time they weren't allowed, retail marijuana was not allowed, that when the, if and when the law changed, in five years, Heal could convert. And we could not say no. We can so enter in a host agreement. We can enter we a host no. agreement, but can't we can't say, no. say, sorry, we're only allowing two and you're not one of them, because we have a, we have an, a, a signed contract saying, yes, you can convert, I believe it's 2021, but I'm not 100% sure on that date, but I think that's the date. So, so the statute says um, that the town cannot have a zoning, that the a zoning ordinance or bylaw shall not operate to prevent the conversion of a medical marijuana treatment center licensed or registered not later than July 1, 2017, engaged in cultivation, manufacture, manufacturing, or sale of marijuana or marijuana products to a marijuana establishment engaged in the same type of activity under this under this chapter. So I don't see anything specifically in the statute that says they have an as of right ability to convert. Again, well, I do think they would need That's pretty strong language, to, though, that you just read. Correct. It, and that's a zoning bylaw that would prohibit that conversion. So I do think that the board would have to entertain a request to execute a host community agreement. Right. but. I haven't seen a case yet, and there hasn't been precedent as to you know whether there would be a reasonable um, condition that would allow the board to deny someone a host community agreement at that point. And and that's all I'm saying here. The law, the, the marijuana law, is the way that it was written. It was written by proponents of the law, not by um, attorneys or by the legislator, and so there are a lot of inconsistencies and a lot of um, areas of vagueness in the law, and all I'm saying is that, again, they would have to come back to the board, and there may um, be you know, a, a reason that the board refuses a host community agreement. I cannot predict how that would um, play out in the court system right now because it would be a case of first precedent. Yeah, and, and thank you, but we were even told, we. You have not always been the council that came before us it's when we were discussing this. Yeah. We had a male um, associate mm -hmm. in the past. It, 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 he was I different. Him. I mean, I'm not, I, it, no offense, but I was under the impression we had to entertain a host agreement. I don't know if we can just flat out say no. I think the safest course of action is to issue two host agreements, and I think that HEAL should be one of them. Do you have a motion? No, he, it, we have he, a motion uh, on the floor for a second because I'm, I'm not. His clear motion on is his for motion. caregivers. Yeah, but he said something about heal. Well, he's going to also come forward and. and Wait, is that tied it's into a, this one? No. Now, look, just, we can. Wait a minute. I don't mean to the interrupt. Motion is, the okay, motion was to enter into a host agreement. And I second it. With caregivers. Just caregivers. caregivers. So what he said yes. about heal is not connected to this. He said he would bring it. I said I'll discuss that later. Yeah. So 
meaning I wanted to vote on this and not discuss all yeah. this well, other stuff. Well, you did stuff. say your intention was to lift the requirement for HEAL. So, I mean, I think you're okay with three host agreements. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but that was the innuendo when you said you're going to come back with HEAL. I, was, I, would, I said I had a question for council after, okay. after the vote. Okay, so we have a motion and we have a second. Any more discussion? I'll give okay. my input now on this. Uh, this was my big decision coming into the night to issue three or two licenses with the assumption that HEAL could convert in a couple of years. And I just think for a small town of Sturbridge, three is too many. Um, so I am not in favor of the motion. Okay. Anything else? Mike, you looking? Hmm? Like, you looking like you want to talk? Well, the um, well, the the fact of of the matter is that uh, you know uh, you know when I the, these are legal businesses. Uh, we have we have. Uh, uh, you know, many establishments in town. Uh, the for for things like uh, alcohol and and so forth. Uh, more more so, you know, more restaurants with. Uh, we voted. We, we're going to be voting on uh, increasing our our population, our summer population, so that we can have more more uh, uh, liquor licenses or or at least uh, mm. so I th you know I think the uh, you know the difference between two or three uh, establishments for adult use marijuana these are legal businesses and if you're pro-business you should vote in favor of it because they're they're operating a legal business in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts if you're if you're against business then you should vote against it, it I mean it's it Sturbridge is, yes, a small town, but its location is such that it's a big town. And uh, I, I'm, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the things that Sturbridge gets wrapped for is we're anti-business. And, uh, you know, I, and I don't want to project that. I, I think these, all of these businesses that came before us are, you know, they came in good faith asking uh, to enter into agreements with the town to do a legal business in the, in the town. And, I, you know, I have a hard time saying that, uh, oh, we're such a small town, we can't, we can't handle it. Yes, we, we are, a, you know, I, you know I, I, I grew up in town, and I know that, uh, I, I know a lot of, uh, of people in town are for this and and some are against it but uh, at some point you gotta you gotta take a look at you know the business a aspect of of uh, this whole thing and take some of the emotional stuff out of it and that, you know, I that's why I came to my conclusion is that yes we can handle uh, three retail establishments in town. I, I, there's no question in my mind that, that the town of Sturbridge can, can handle that. Priscilla? First of all, I want to just clarify, I'm not anti-business, but the uh, marijuana shops are based on how many alcohol permits we also have. That's one. The second thing is the residents have made it clear they wanted two. So my vote is not against any business because caregiver was my number one pro choice. Um, it's not against any business. It's what the residents have asked. And as I sit here, that's who I represent. And um, I wish we could give all three and then four or five of them, but they're based on how many liquor licenses we have. And that's how the number two comes to play. And so I'm staying with that simply because that's what we've learned to do, um, is to follow whatever the, the guideline has been, and that's what it is. Unfortunate, but it is what it is. Okay, Mary, um, and, and I'm gonna. Okay, move on. Uh, uh, looks like the vote's there, but um, I don't think that 
in order to be called pro-business, you have to vote in favor of three retail cannabis stores. My husband is self-employed, and that's how we make our money. So it would be hypocritical for me to say I'm not pro-business. But at the same time, under that reasoning, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, we're also here to give a voice to the residents who elected us. And again, the majority that went to the polls didn't want any. That was the majority vote initially, none. So um, I think that it is on us to give them a voice and to be and to heed the traffic. We can always go the other way and issue more. Mm -hmm. This is our opportunity to, to limit it right now. And um, I, I, I feel firmly that, that two is plenty, but I don't, I do take issue with um, mm -hmm. having, being labeled as yeah. anti-business because I don't want to vote for three retail stores. Yeah. So um, I will just leave it at that. Okay. Yes. Um, and, and I, you know, I, I take issue with you saying that a majority of the people of the town. They are, did. A vote is a vote. The majority two -thirds, of the vote. Two-thirds vote to get a, a zone change. I'm not talking at town meeting, and I did, I did separate town meeting from the initial vote which was a town-wide vote mm -hmm. that had a lot more people present than town meeting. And they voted none. And we couldn't give any validity to that because we had to jump both hoops. But I'm talking sheer numbers. We had 600 plus people right when it was at the voting booth that said yes, just like, we just like Westboro did, just like Northboro <laughs> did, just like Hopkinton did, just like West, a lot of towns kept them entirely out, and that was the vote that I was referring to. Madam Chair, can we move the question? Yes, I just wanted to say um, I fully support Mike's motion. That's why I seconded it. And I fully, I think that it doesn't scare me that when the five years is up that they will come back and ask for another host agreement. Um, one, uh, what number of Main Street is it? Is it not the most 365 thing? Main Street. I mean, they're ready to go, and that is an eyesore. Everyone talks about how bad it looks. They're ready to go. Heal, on the other hand, um, I'm not quite thrilled with their um, penalties and fines. They have fines. They don't really have... Um, uh, penalty plus their other medical isn't it's up but it's not operating because they don't have a grow yet so I'm totally in favor of 365 Main Street because I think they're ready to go so we do have a motion we do have a second to enter into a host community agreement with caregiver patient connection at 365 Main Street all those in favor? All those opposed? Motion fails. Okay, another motion. I have a comment. Mary? Um, so if we, if we move on to heal, I'm going, we have already made suggestions, at least I have, that we've all supported on changes to the host agreement. <coughs> Do you want to make a suggestion for changing the penalty on the host agreement for heal? No. Um, <laughs> we've been discussing these things forever. And, you know, it is what it is. And, you know, three people are happy with, you know, what's written. You've agreed to that, so... No, I don't want to make a motion. Somebody going to make a make motion? The motion for you? Is that what, that what we're asking? Okay, so I'll well, make a motion. Well, that's all that's left to make okay. a motion to enter so, or not to enter. All right. So I'm going to use the one you sent. That what I was supposed to do? And, and just to clarify, um, the one that I sent was a proposal to enter into a host community agreement with Heal Stirbridge, Stirbridge and then also to agree um, to a new host community agreement with healing Inc. okay with the conversion language okay so I'm gonna make the motion you can correct me if I'm wrong I, if, no. if that's what you'd like to do it's written there in, okay in the that's what I'm gonna read motion. then okay 
I move to approve and enter into the proposed host community agreement with Heal Sturbridge, Inc. for a retail adult use marijuana establishment at 660 Main Street in Sturbridge and in conjunction therewith to approve and enter into the proposed amendment to the existing host community agreement with Heal, Inc. for a medical marijuana treatment center at the same location. Is that correct? Is there a second? Second. Discussion? No discussion? We've discussed enough. Okay, all those in favor of the motion? All those opposed? Passed. Three to two, the motion carries. Okay, let me just get this down. We'll work, uh, Madam Chair. Jeff. Uh, council and staff will work on revising those agreements and getting those to the applicants that uh, you've awarded those to, and we'll get those back for signature. Sounds good. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Mike, Mary. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm sure. We will do a great job. <laughs> she's on medical leave. She has, but she's resting. I hope up. so. When she's been doing the same thing okay. for 10 That's years, what I'm saying. I hope so. Rest, yep. Hopefully, she'll get back. But she's getting old for a dancer. Good luck. <laughs> oh, thank you. Good luck, Thank you. Good luck. And your name? The location that I can What Did you say Wagner? Good luck. Telling us it's not over for a shit. All those phone calls and people at breakfast. Good luck. Yeah. Congratulations. I will. I will. I will. Huh? Uh, yeah. You know, I, I look. I I want you to prove. Oh boy. I want you to. I want it. I want it all to you. I and oh wow! And the best location. We yeah. Go, we go it up. Okay. <laughs> oh geez. Yeah. Now, what's your last name? That's and, right. And I got that written someplace. Yeah. You're very welcome. You're right. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Let's put it this way. If I. Oh. If I wasn't on the okay. side, I could have passed me. Uh, Good, I clean off my desk now. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I, well, I mean, I have all the piles, too. Yeah. Not as much as Wait. him, because he's got all the background. background. I thought you were yeah. coming oh. on my desk. It's the prevailing side that I have. bad. Okay, I switched my vote. I have the package in the sample. Yeah. What Not are you the, doing? Too late. For what? What are you reconsidering? Okay. Yeah. Moving on. It's our boat. Too late. Uh, it's too late. <laughs> it's never too late. Huh? What are you considering? Never too late. What are we never too late. Vote motion to reconsider. What are we reconsidering? He wants to. Well, he I'm didn't say. But what? Yeah. What? We talked about a lot of things. I'm changing my vote in favor of. Of, uh, well, then your motion has to be okay. and reconsideration on the vote to enter yeah, so into a host, host agreement, agreement with Heal. With he Not with Heal. Mm -hmm. with? Should, we should call them all back. Yeah, well, back who are we talking about? Okay. I don't know. Who are we talking about? I don't know. I mean, we're talking about reconsideration. What are we reconsidering? Um, Nothing. No, I, I have a motion to reconsider my vote. On what, Mike? On, uh, on the uh, bloodies, uh, on, uh, was it, 3 2? 253? 253. Holy smokes. Are you making that as a motion? Mike? Yeah, motion to reconsider. Put it in a full thing. What you're reconsidering? Reconsidering our vote to approve. Uh, Entering into an agreement, post agreement. Yeah. With. Should I get the applicant? Looks that way. 
I don't know. No, it's cool. You want to see if you can grab that, please? Yeah, this is, you know. I'll second for the purposes of discussion. We'll just discuss it for a minute. We're. Wait a minute, I think the proponent. Yeah, they should be here. Should he have a discussion? Can I run to the bathroom? You yeah, you sure got that? time. I think we picked the wrong site. Yep. Uh, Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm just praying. Mm. Hi. <laughs> all right. Yeah. If you could join us for a few more minutes, please. Oh, of course. Yeah. We really will um, do a good job with you. We're going to start trying to get the building ready, like literally, start trying to do tomorrow. Yeah. yeah, I made a motion to reconsider. Wait for Mary. Wait for Mary. Until Mary Wait, comes huh? back. Wait for Mary. Oh. Please. Is uh, let's see. So, I they were getting Jean and Nicole. Come back. She'll be back. Okay. Now we'll wait for Jeff. Jeff, where is Jeff now? I don't know where he went. To get in the oh. Nicole's on the way up. Okay.
Thank you for coming back. Of course. <laughs> That's how we keep Jeff in shape. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, we were discussing uh, uh, the, uh, you know, I, I had I made a comment that we picked the wrong site as far as the, uh, so I made a motion to reconsider because I, I truly believe that, uh, and it's no reflection on. Well, wait a minute, Mike, you really have to okay, make a motion. Okay, I made a motion. motion to reconsider. On? Uh, on the. Um, host agreement. Host agreement with. with uh, 253. 253. Uh, Organic. Organic. I was on the. Women. Uh, yeah. No second. I seconded it. Oh yeah, I didn't realize you waited for that. Yeah, I seconded it. I seconded it again. Discussion. Uh, the reason, you know, I, I was sitting here and I said, well, we picked the wrong site of the two uh, sites, and it's no reflection on the proponents at all. It's just the site consideration. The, um, and so I want to reconsider uh, my vote on uh, 253 organic, uh, and it's just of the, of the sites that, uh, that we selected, I, I think it's not the most favorable of the two sites. Okay. So that's that's my. Uh, okay, Mike. I do want to say that I am disappointed that we have gone through all this over several meetings, working with all the proponents, having much material to read, and weighing everything before we came to this meeting tonight. And now at the last minute, all of a sudden, there's no new information, but the whole thing has changed. Mike, don't do this. You know, um, I just want to say I'm disappointed in you because I do know you do your homework. You don't wait till you get here to read things. And um, these are the same sites. Nothing's changed about them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone else? But it's, you know, it's the way the motions came. It, it, um, and in retrospect, I, I think, I, I truly think uh, if, uh, you know, given the restrictions that the board has placed on, you know, they want that they we're only going to have two, uh, two uh, sites and uh, uh, two host agreements. I think, I, I, I don't think we're doing the best for the town, what we vo what I voted. I don't feel like I voted correctly this evening. Uh, the way things, uh, the sequence of the way things came came down. I would, I would prefer, uh, as I said, uh, I, I, you know, I've indicated which sites I thought were we're fine, but I, I have to pick which one I think is the best for the town. Um, well, it's not a public hearing. It's a public meeting, and I, um, Chairman does have the discretion at a public meeting to allow people to talk. So when we finish, I will allow a few words. Mike, these are the same three sites we've been looking at. Mm -hmm. um, you should have known it beforehand. I just get upset when we go through this, have the proponents go through this, and now all of a sudden do a total flip-flop. Okay, anyone else want to say anything? Okay. Uh, I guess what I'm trying to understand. Uh, uh, could you go to the mic, please, for the people sure. at home? I'd like to go with him. Yeah, right. We're, yes. we're both attorneys, and we both want to speak. He's uh, with Vincente Sederberg, 
and I'm with the Wagner Law Group. Sure. And we also are, by the way, counsel to K uh, and P L K P Law. Just FYI. Um, my law firm is a cannabis national cannabis law firm. We've been working with about a hundred cities and towns around Massachusetts, and I've sort of seen this before. I guess what I'm wondering, obviously, uh, sir, you you felt some comfort level with the group that I'm representing here and their ability to operate. I'm wondering why, uh, given that one of these groups can't possibly operate adult use at this time, why not allow the two and then you can see where you go uh, whenever that group is up for consideration. They may or may not still be around at that time, uh, but clearly they can't operate now, so why not um, allow the two that you voted to allow today and then you can see where you are. Um, after the moratorium that you have expires. I have no idea whether uh, that group will still be there, will still want to operate there, um, but you're allowed to uh, vote for two. You voted for two, and I think uh, presumably they're good operators. I don't know why we wouldn't go forward with them. And, and I'd like to say a few things. First of all, if the town is concerned with tax revenue, we will be up and running before anyone else. Heal has been around for three years, is it? Have they done anything? No. Are they well capitalized? No. Will they likely be spinning off to sell because you just granted this license? Yes. Do you know whom they're going to sell to? No. With respect to, well, I understand it's speculative, but I also have been around a while. The other thing is with CPC, uh, we, have, we have a building ready to go, and we are well capitalized. We have our retail ready that's up and running. We are currently cultivating. We are currently manufacturing. We are the only one that is good to go. And if you care about tax revenue, which is what I would presume you would care about, you would want to get someone, some institution that is good for it and that can go. And we are ready, willing, and able to go. The enthusiasm that you saw from us is real. We were, we were talking down the stairs about how we were going to implement or start implementing tomorrow. We are well capitalized and we are well organized. So these are things pro the town. Now you have to look at the equities. We have invested much time, much energy, much of our capital into this, into making this a go. All, all in very good faith, negotiating in good faith. Now that a vote has been taken and a motion to reconsider, we have to query your good faith and if we have legal rights. So you're wondering about tangential legal rights of Hill that I don't think exist, by the way. It's not statutory. It says you can't make a zoning change. I had written a memo that I'd given to Vicente Sederberg for their letterhead to give to you to show you that you were not mandated to provide a host agreement to them. That is not mandated. You just can't zone them out. So even assuming arguendo that they're going to be in business by 2021, they have the capital to stay alive, it'll be a different company and you don't even have to give them a host agreement if you want to. What we bring for, so we, one, I think we have a cause of action, but two, and more importantly, the right thing to do for your town is to go with the people that can give you the tax revenue as soon as reasonably practical. And the only people of the three who can do that are the people sitting here now that you had already voted in favor of. Nothing has changed except the fact that we are ready, willing, and able, and literally downstairs, we're trying to get our ducks in a row for tomorrow at 8 a.m. So I urge you to let this vote stand because it is the right thing to do for your taxpayers, for us, for you, for everyone. Please just do the right thing. We have all given so much to this. Just do the right thing. It's always the easiest thing to do. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mary? I just have one comment that has nothing to do with most of what you said. Um, but I am extremely uncomfortable um, when one applicant comments on another applicant's yeah. um, ability to produce or has any comments whatsoever when that applicant is not present, they're at a, a real disadvantage. Well, you so, can ask for financials uh, hold on. or anything else. Uh, hold on. I think, think I still have the floor. I'm very uncomfortable when... Um, 
what I just said, and I want the record to reflect that, that heal is not present, and representations were made about heal, and they are not present, and I'm uncomfortable with that. I'll just leave it at that. You all have the ability to ask for any and all financial statements, for business plans, for any spreadsheet with respect to cost of goods, cost, cost of cultivation, cost of real estate. If you go through the numbers of all three organizations, I am sure that you will see that far and away, we are the strongest. We currently, from our cash flow of Montague, can and will support the construction of Sturbridge without having to raise additional capital. That we are very committed to this. We are locally owned. We are not selling off. We are not splitting ourselves up to sell off. We are committed to doing this and doing this right. We're here. We're here now. And within the shortest period of time, we will be operational, which means you will get your revenue. Thank you. Can Anyone we move else? Question? No. Can we move okay. the question? We have a motion and we have a second. All those in favor of the motion? All those opposed? Okay. That motion carries for reconsideration. Okay, now Mike, the ball's in your court. Okay. Um, the you know, I, the um, you know, much has been said here about the location of of the uh, all three facilities, and uh, the uh, the the location on Route 131. There were some questions raised by uh, board members about traffic and so forth. The location on Route 20, there were no questions asked about about that. No no questions raised about uh, traffic considerations and and so forth. Um, so, and you know, I I have not asked any questions about financial stability or something. I I presume that uh, that we should have looked into that. We did. Um, so if we did, then, uh, or since uh, I got an affirmative, we did, I, I really haven't inquired that, but that, that I think the, my primary consideration is I want, it, you know, if we're going to have two, uh, I would like the two best sites I, uh, that we can have. And apparently, um, you know, I think the best the best site of the three was was definitely the Route 20 site, and the route uh, the the one uh, uh, that uh, caregiver <coughs> has tied up in. So that's my consideration, and uh, they would have been my first choice. Um, what about the time? of construction and the fact that it's literally a whole new site. Oh, my God, I'm curious, are you related to George Supernant? I'm just kind of curious. Is that an ancestor, a distant ancestor? Uh, it's my grandfather. It's your grandfather? Well, what I do, and I was wondering about that, is, is when I have buyer's remorse, so when I'm not sure what my decision is, and if it's going to be right or wrong, and I'm unclear, and I go one way, then I go another, then I go another, then I go another. Mm -hmm. I ask what my ancestors would do. And I literally, strange as this might sound, talk to them or try to figure out what my ancestors would do, because I loved them. And the second you said that, I hadn't looked at that before, but like this, I looked at that, which is very strange for me to do. I don't often be marble. So, the fact that I put that together immediately, what would your grandfather do? You gave your word to us. You really did by that vote. You made a whole bunch of people and our families very happy because we have been living this with you all for a year and a half. What would your grandfather do when you go back on your word for whatever reason? That's what it is. And that's why something called me to figure out that was your ancestor. And so I'm telling you, that wasn't random. You got it. You should do the right thing. The right thing is stay with your word. I believe that in my heart, and I believe that in my soul. And again, I think you can do that and still approve these, and then make the determination regarding 
the other one at a later time. There's just no need to make that determination right now. Yeah. All that's sorts the, of things could happen yeah, to them. Or no, that's, wait, hold on. Sure. Um, that was brought up, and I think I even said that, too, that we don't know we can address it when it comes down the pike. Right. Uh, the same way I addressed Mary's, um, the affordable housing complex. Um, so we do have a motion and a second, and the majority voted to reconsider. So now we need another motion on the... Do you want to make no, the No, you can, you can make it. It is your thing. I'll let you, I'll support whatever you come up with. Madam Chair, if I may, you, you might also want to refer to the proposed motions that I had um, given the board because there are uh, motions in favor of executing hosting media and it's not in favor, and so you can use that as a template if you like. Yeah, Mike. Okay. Mike. Do you want to spare it? Yeah. Motion? It's from the lawyer. Oh, yeah. Um, so I would move not to enter into an agreement, uh, proposed host community agreement uh, with 253. Organic LEC for retail adult use marijuana establishment at 138 Main Street in Sturbridge. Is that? That's a proper motion. Okay. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carries three to two. Let's talk. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Want me to make the other one? You want to make the other one? If you want it. You want to make it? You can. I don't think you want to. No, you can if you want. You were the one that was. I know. I'm okay with it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I move to approve and enter into the proposed host community agreement with caregiver patient uh, connection LLC for a retail adult use marijuana establishment at 365 Main Street in Sturbridge. Second. Okay, let me just get that. Any discussion? I still want it recorded that I am totally disappointed in the process that went on this evening. Um, I don't think I've ever been on any board in all my years on different boards where on a big topic people weren't prepared in well beforehand and changed their mind at the last minute, upsetting the cart for several people. Okay, so we have a motion, we have a second. All those in favor of the motion? All those opposed? Motion carries, three to two. Mary, can I make a statement? Yep. I believe I was prepared so and- My lawyer and just told me that I have to inform you, so it's on record, that we're going to join you from any host agreements that long as we can negotiations of that faith. So you are now, I notice that you're enjoined from all. Okay? Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you. Okay. It'll be the uh, will be drafted tomorrow. I don't know when they'll get it, maybe tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, but it's enjoined until. But that's the last thing to do today. Okay. Wonderful. So where does that leave us? So you can't simply enjoin someone by telling them that you're going to enjoin them. Um, it seems that what they are implying is that they will file a lawsuit against the town, um, potentially under, it appears, um, bad faith negotiations and host community agreements, and it appears that they've indicated that they will seek what's called a preliminary injunction, um, which is a motion that they will file with the court to um, prohibit the board from entering into any further host community agreements or to... Um, prohibit the applicants that the board has already granted uh, or has already voted to execute host community agreements with 
from actually uh, opening pursuance to the pending litigation. Can I ask the attorney? Yes. Okay, so in your experience as an attorney, correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding of parliamentary rules and, and all of that, that the prevailing side can always ask for reconsideration. I know that, I know we've been told this at our annual town meetings that if, if something passes and along the way during the evening or the prevailing side asks for reconsideration, it can be done. So are we not within our right to have asked for reconsideration? In my opinion, the reconsideration here was proper. You did have the parties present. Um, there was a proper motion made. However, as the board is aware, um, parties can sue for any reason. So, you know, the fact that there is a lawsuit that is threatened, um, I can't tell you how that will play out, although I, I do believe that the board considered each applicant fairly. It does seem that there was some confusion as to which site um, was the site that was connected to the applicant. Mm -hmm. There was a case, I believe it was in Salem, where they did have a restriction on the number of um, establishments that could be located in town, and there is some case precedent there as to things that the board can consider, and in that case, um, there was a request for a preliminary injunction that was denied where the board was picking um, between a pool of applicants and considered things other than monetary uh, gains, which is what was alleged in the Salem lawsuit. Again, these cases are cases of first impression because the law with respect to marijuana establishments is so new, um, but that does seem like what has been um, indicated from counsel for 253 Pharma that they are going to initiate a litigation and seek a preliminary injunction. The, Mike? So the, you said things other than monetary gains were considered. So my consideration, in my opinion, one site is preferable to another. Would that be a legitimate consideration? In, in, in my opinion, it, it was. In my opinion, the board did consider all facets of the proposals made by each applicant. I, I, I don't think the board focused um, on one thing in particular. I think the board gave its well-reasoned decision and, and there was um, deliberation that was, again, reasonable in my opinion and, and considered each applicant and the entirety of their proposal. Um, that, ag again, is my opinion, but I cannot tell you what a court will decide, just that, in my opinion, the board um, did make a reasonable decision here. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, <coughs> next <coughs> and me on the agenda. We have old business, Priscilla. No. Uh, well, actually, I'm not sure if it's old or new, but that economic discussion that we all were part of, that we all got um, that survey, I believe is the 13th of February. So it's open to anyone who wants to come. Correct? Jeff? Which one? The economic, dis there's an economic discussion. One more question before she leaves. Can I just ask you one more question? No, it's okay. 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 Um, so now we have the motion to enter into a host agreement with caregivers. Um, absent their filing and being awarded a preliminary injunction, at this point, we, we are, well, I guess you, are we, um, under any obligation not to move forward with the host agreement where there's no? No, in my opinion, an applicant cannot simply just inform the board that they're enjoined without any type of court order. Right. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify that's, that. That's up to a yeah. judge. And if someone, I'm assuming the, the town administrator will notify Heal of the out, because he, Heal left, they don't know what happened. I know, but they, they got their agreement. Yeah, their situation this that. doesn't affect But them. is it not courtesy to tell them that it wasn't what they left thinking it was? But we'll let them know in the morning. Yeah. And, and certainly, um, if they are a party to the litigation, they would have to be served. Right. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, my question was, we had received an email about some economic discussion from, McC I think it's McCabe, or McGabe, that we took part in that discussion. We talked about this Saturday. Kathy McCabe. McCabe, right. And there's a, 
public meeting on the 13th of February here at the town hall. Am I correct? 6 p.m. Yep. 6 p.m. Okay. Because it's supposed to be, is that going to be posted on our website? Yes, As we'll make sure. An open invitation because it's open to people, but I'm, t I'm sure a lot don't know about it. We'll make sure it's posted. Thank you. Circulate. Thank you. That's it. Mm -hmm. Chase? I have no old. Mike? Uh, no old business. business. Mary? No. Um, my only question is how are we doing with Sturbridge Auto Sales? We mailed him a certified letter. Um, we've not gotten the card back yet. Okay. We'll follow up by the end of the week. Okay, thank you. Let me, okay, just, this is what it looks like, chicken scratch. Okay, new business, Priscilla? No. No, no. Mike? No. Mary? Um, I just have one. Um, Sue Brogan contacted me. She headed up the um, Pan Mash Challenge, and she would like to, I, with your permission, give you her cell. She would like to come in, thank the police and the fire, like she usually you does, do. um, and give a call out to them and give us an update on how the Pan Mash went. So maybe she could well, be on yeah, a future can, agenda. Yeah, she can call. Um, Andrea, you, okay. I'll tell her too. Okay. It would just be a short thing. Yeah, she's here Beginning. for like five minutes. Right here right oh, okay. I didn't know if you could sometimes tell us what a good job yeah, that we did. Everybody did. <laughs> I'll have her call you, um, Andrea. Okay, I don't have any new correspondence. to the end. Here it is, Mike. See him. Okay. That's it? Yep. Oh, the cut is just a notice of a public meeting mm -hmm. for the Central Mass um, MPO, the Metropolitan Planning Organization, which is uh, uh, on proposed amendment number two for the 2020 uh, 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 transit uh, uh, tip. The t transportation improvement uh, plan and that will be when is it it's on Wednesday February 5th it's uh, at, in Worcester at the uh, CMRPC offices at in Worcester at 1 Mercantile Street and that'll be at 5 p.m. on February 5th again and I think that's all the correspondence we have yep Okay, <clears throat> approval of minutes, January 2nd. <laughs> January 2nd. Any corrections? I didn't do them, so. I know. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Don't take it to heart. We'll let Sam know. Yeah. Well, that's because it was just a lot of motions yeah. on the articles. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, somebody want to make a motion then to approve okay. the minutes as written? So moved. Okay, I'll second it. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay, then we have the minutes of January 6th. I have one correction. Priscilla? Um, Andrea, on page um, oh, 223, okay, mm -hmm. right? Um, one, two, three, four, the fourth, the fourth paragraph. So uh, what page of the minutes do you know? Like one, one, two, three, page three of the minutes. Okay. Page, yeah. And it says Selectman Jim has brought up that last water leak, it should say issue, it should say water leak. That's it. Up that last Water leak, water leak yeah. affected the elevator. So take out issue and that and put water leak. Right. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, motion to approve the minutes is amended. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, and then we have a real long one, January 27th. <laughs> Boy, that was a long one, huh? <laughs> Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. OK, 
Okay. That was a perfect one. I made it. <laughs> <laughs> so happy. Okay. Citizens Forum. Mo motion to adjourn. <laughs> Okay, I'll second it. Uh, Any discussion? All in favor? Uh,